Hey everyone, and welcome to Superheroes Speak. I'm your host, Dave. And John. Hey. Hey, the gang's back together this week. Woohoo! <laughs> Long time no see. It's two weeks. How's everyone doing? John, mm. how are you? Well, let's see. We've had an earthquake. And then two broods of cicadas that never come out at the same time are cicadas. both coming out this year. Cicadas, cicada, whatever. And then the and, and then we have an eclipse tomorrow. So I'm just waiting for you know, the fire and brimstone. <laughs> listen to listen to Marjorie Taylor Green over here. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 good one. Yes, Stop. indeed. I mean, and, and now, a it's lot not of like it. we didn't have a, 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 a an eclipse seven years ago. You know, I'm just. Saying. I, well, it's not yeah, like we have the, eclipses. Like it's there. There's such a thing that we can merchandise it. So I mean, like, come on. I know, but but you couple that with the fact that we had uh, on the East Coast, we had a, an earthquake, a literal earthquake here a couple yeah. of days ago. Supposed to figure of earthquake. They are yeah. Well, they <laughs> they are very rare on the East Coast. The last one we had a th uh, that the last real one that we had that wasn't caused by fracking was in 2011. So yes, that um, was a point roll when it happened. Yeah, and I had just left Point Roll for VWR, I think. Yes. I was in VWR when that happened. So, yeah, it, um, it it's just, it's kind of crazy. Otherwise, oh, I don't know. Um, the security people at my company are going a little wacko, and, and I was locked out of my laptop for two days. And, um, yeah, just, and, and... I'm, I'm, Fire I'm and Brimstone. Fire and Brimstone. Cats, cats, cats living, living together. Mass yes, hysteria. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm glad so you're you're handling it well, John. That's you know you've immediately gone into worrying about ghosts and goblins when natural things happen. Well, you know, hey, um, Don. It, it would be no. a good excuse to not have to work that day. I mean, yeah. The <laughs> but, apocalypse? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I can't work. There's an eclipse. An apocalypse happening. I don't know. I get demons at this. At, you know, at my door. I'm gonna have to. You know, I just sorry guys. I'm just gonna have to log off the day. Um, yeah, no, that's that's about it, you know. Uh, just I I I've been I the last few days I've been really freaking um, productive, and yet I'm sitting here feeling like I didn't get anything done. So this adulting thing just you know not fun. Yeah, adulting sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah, which is you know why we do a podcast. So anyway, that's it for me. How you doing, JD? Gentlemen, I have a story. Um, <clears throat> so yesterday, uh -oh. I took... We have a Titanic exhibit. Not by my house, but an hour and a half away from my house. Like in uh, kind of north north of Chicago. A little town called Skokie. Um, <clears throat> at a mall. They took one of the old stores and they built a Titanic exhibit. Mm -hmm. And um, my kids have been kind of into the idea of the Titanic. So, I mean, I've never been... I've never been moved about the Titanic. Like There's this romanticism of the Titanic that I've never shared yeah. Right. It's yeah. never it's never interested me in the slightest. But Jack dying didn't make you cry. Cried. He could cried. have fit on that board with Rose. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah, they were, he was trying to get away from her. My <laughs> wife argues that if he had gotten on that door, the boat think sunk. So uh, whatever. Um, it, never cared for the film. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, uh, so we went to this thing, and uh, it was worth the money. But boy, did it did it not pull punches about the experience of the Titanic. And my eight-year-old learned firsthand about death and um, the unfairness of the social casting system, especially of the uh, early 20th century. When you see, these are the first yeah. class passengers that died. These are the second class passengers. These are the third class passengers that died. You yeah. know, and it was it was harsh to read about. And then when you go to the last room, you find out, oh, something similar happened on the Chicago River three years later, where 800, 900 people died in about yeah. 45 seconds. So, I mean, you're mm -hmm. just like, I mean, we just, at one point, we had to leave. The three of us were like, we're just tired of death. And so we left and went to the Cheesecake Factory and had a decent mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, <laughs> um, dinner with friends that night. And it was like a lot. And wife driving home, friends, about the work, work and like mental over the last like two months and then death of dad and then really taking time every day to really work on it 
And I think it's been helping. I told her how much better I've been feeling and how, what a better place I'm in right now and how I'm happy and I feel great. And as I said that word, a dog ran up from the ditch at night and I hit it with the car and killed a dog. And I didn't even know what I hit at first. I thought I ran over a box. And my wife says, I think you hit a dog because this is 1030 at night at a farm road. And I said, I did what? And like, I was in like in denial. I'm like, well, I pulled the car over and sure enough, the front of my car is freaking wrecked. And I went, what the hell? And then so we should we got to go back and look for it because that's how her cousin died. He was walking home from a bar and a guy ran him over and never called anybody. They could have saved him, but instead they let him die on the side of the road. So we both went, yeah, we got to go back just to be sure. So I came back, and sure enough, a dead dog was in the middle of a ditch. And we checked, had no collar, or he had a collar, no tags. So there's, there's called nothing the sheriff. you can do. Nope, yeah. that's everyone's told me that. Nothing you can do, but I mean, I don't like it. And as, as I was talking about how good I've been feeling lately, and how happy I've been, and how I'm really feeling like I'm getting my shit together, I killed a dog in the same breath. So... That's where I'm at. Um, I, for, first off, I feel you. I once hit a, a, I was going to work uh, and a black cat at 530 in the morning when it was pitch black ran in front of my car. Like Black lab li- here. Yeah. There's no, nothing you could do about that. Mm-hmm. Like li- literally nothing. And yes, I still feel guilty myself. I understand. Um, if you want to bring your your son's um, uh, misery level up a up a bit from from the uh, Titanic. Two interesting facts about the Titanic. One, there was a cook who was so drunk that his that there was so much alcohol in his blood that it couldn't freeze, and he survived. Um, and two, have your son look up the unsinkable Molly Brown. Oh, we know. We talked about. It. They had a big display I mean, about her. It's kind of now, and that that actually got me to tears, where she was trying to help people, and nobody yep. else wanted it, and she yep. was trying to be a good person, and that's a hard. Hard bitter pill to swallow. She she had oh, married in, she had married into into high society, mm-hmm. but she but she came from you know salt of the earth roots. Common and, stock, as they yep. say. Yeah, but but she, and, and there you go. She tried to help everybody she could. You know, I uh, like mm-hmm. when uh, way 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 back when in the seventies, um, a cat came out of the woods drenched um, at my old mother's old house. And there had been a hurricane. And this cat just drags its sorry carcass up. My mother named it uh, Molly Brown because, oh. you know, because she, she managed to survive this downpour that would have killed anything that, that was out during it. So, and then she, she had kittens for us, which was I was really wondering, nice. I was wondering how you were going to tie those two things together. That, that actually, you stuck the landing on that, John. Congratulations. Yeah. So that was my day yesterday. I'm sorry, ma'am. I, you know. My... No. I'll join the chorus of there's nothing so, you can do about that. No, Sometimes things happen. And... It, it is. And I've, again, I've killed two deer, three squirrels, and two raccoons, and now a dog with my car. My kill count is way higher than I'm comfortable with for a guy who's never gone hunting, for a guy who does not like to kill anything. I don't like it. I hate it. And I'm not in a great mood, to be quite mm. frank. Like, I know there's nothing I could have done. I know I did the right thing. If an animal's in the road, you have to take it out. You cannot swerve. You cannot, you cannot jack on the brakes. You have to go forward, yeah. right? You have to. You have no choice. You have to. I told my son that. So if you're driving, someday you'll be driving. And if the deer is in the road, you have to hit it. Because if you swerve, you could lose control of the car and hurt other people around you. Or, or kill yourself. And, yourself. and kill yourself. Yeah. Like, you have to hit it. And I, I know I did the quote-unquote right thing. But doing the right thing fucking sucks sometimes. And mm. I just don't like it. So... I'm not in the best mood tonight doing the show. Oh, uh, that that does not bode well for um Ooh, Highlander. Okay. No, yeah. Highland, no, I'll stick the I'll, I'm a professional. I'm gonna stick the landing on this. I'm just not thrilled. Dave. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to follow that up. Um You can't. Dude. I stole your thunder. It's what I do. Yes, yes. It, it, and, and I'm I'm used to it. Uh, I'm all right. Fair. I'm can't complain much, or at least oh. not on air. Uh, mm. <laughs> um, just uh, no. I mean, I had a I had a, a an interesting week. Um, 
I had to make some decisions about uh, some financial stuff, but uh, it's not important enough to talk about on here. Or at least I don't want to share it on here. I'll tell you guys. Well, John knows already. I'll tell you later, probably. And, um, and yeah. Um, uh, <sighs> oh, that's what I was going to talk about. Uh, I did start watching Reacher. Uh, on oh, Prime. finally. Yeah, it's really good. It's really, it? really good. Everyone says that. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, I can't think of the actor's name. He was Aquaman on Small. Alan World. Rich Richardson. Richards? Yes. Rich, Rich Richman, I think it is. No, that's the guy from Man Eats Man vs. Food. I think it's Richard. Richard. <laughs> Rich. No, it's Alan Richson. Richson. You said yeah. Richmond. R- Richson. No, I said Richson. Richson. You said Richmond. Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'll go to my grave with this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, R- Richson. Well, well, yeah. Richson. We'll have to watch we'll watch it on the uh, on the replay later. All right. Uh but yeah, I mean, like it, it's it's interesting. It kind of takes the uh, it's James Bond, not James Bond. It's Sherlock Holmes or Monk, but he's but you in know, a mesomorphic body. <laughs> yes, but he can kick butt, and it's just like yeah, it, it's it's so good. They do a great job of like not necessarily showing that he's super smart or anything, but just he's experienced. So he knows what to do in different situations, and it works really well. What's uh, Le- what did Drew say? Here? Uh, Drew says, "JD, how did your son like the Titanic exhibit?" He felt the same way as me. Um, he was a little. He wasn't. He he wanted to see the big cool boat. That's what he thinks the Titanic is all about. This big giant boat. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Actually, hey Andy, come here. Andy, hold on. Well, I'll get him to tell you. He's in the room midnight. Andrew. Come here. <laughs> He had his headphones on. Oh, I thought you woke him up. <laughs> no, you're going to make an appearance on the podcast. Did someone ask a question for you? They wanted to know what, come speak in the microphone. They wanted to know what you thought of the Titanic exhibit. So talk to me. What did you think of the Titanic I exhibit? I did not like it. Why not? Too much talking about death. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, them. we get it. It's okay, bud. Thanks, man. You can go back to the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. A little too, uh, it was a little too much on the violence and the death for the for the eight-year-old so it, but i think it was a good lesson like and i mean sometimes you need to learn hard things like that and he's getting older and we just we just got over death of grandpa and uh sometimes yeah. you need to learn that these kind of things are real you know so thanks for yeah, asking. the first time you grasp the um the concept of like mortality it's not a fun time for a kid no we really actually isn't. we had that about two and a half years ago when our dog died and that was like his buddy. So he was five going on six, five. Yeah, it was just before kindergarten. So that hit him really, really hard. And like to the point now, he's still very, like I'd say overprotective of our current dog because he just, he worries about it. Like he's like his dad, he's going to be obsessed with death his whole life now, which is great. See, I, I still like the Irish outlook on it. It's just when you die, Drink? it just means there's a really good party. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, again, it's Western culture that, that makes death so stressful for it us. It does. You know? You're right. You're right. You know, there, there are other cultures that look at it as it's part of life and, you know, you honor your ancestors and that sort of thing. But Americans look at it as like, God damn it, I can't take my pile of money with me. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I've been trying to have a more of a... Um, been doing a lot of read, Buddhist reading lately. I'm trying to have more of like an Eastern outlook on these things and trying to, you know, understand, trying to really about living the now as opposed to worrying about the control and all those things. And that's, I guess I've had a lot. And I'm, I'll be, I just feel bad that I, I just feel, keep thinking there's some little kid out there that's waking up without his dog, you know, and that makes me upset. Yeah. So. so. Uh, Thanks for asking, Drew. Uh... <laughs> Yes. Thanks for bringing the show down again. Um, back to Reacher. No, I think that he's he's really good in the role. It's funny because uh, my girlfriend has seen clips online. She hasn't watched the show. And she's like, I don't think he's a good actor. And I'm like, what? No, it's really good. You have to watch it. I don't think it's fair to judge it by short clips on like TikTok, though. No, that's a you terrible know? way to that's a terrible way to imbibe any kind of because you never get a vibe of what really is going on. It's just like a clip, right? Um, to yeah. be fair, 
<clears throat> Lee Child's Jack Reacher character has become like the template model for like every thriller character going on in publishing today. Like Lee Child is kind of like the dude, right? There's yeah. so many people that are out there kind of emulating and cloning Jack Reacher. And did you see the film? Did you see oh, it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise was not Jack Reacher. No, no, well, not, not at Not to all. the books, no. Not to the no. books. Tom Cruise, 5'6". Jack Reacher, 6'6". Six, six. Different guys. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I, I still I still like the, the film, but I like this version of Jack Reacher better, especially it, now that I know the, what it came from. So. I, I mean, it, it's funny because, like, that's the criticism I heard from a lot of people who are fans of the books. Like, that's not Jack Reacher. Like, it was the worst casting ever. That's important, though. Like, especially when you're adapting... When you're adapting, we talk about it all the time on this show, right? When you're adapting, we'll probably talk about it a little bit later. When you're uh, when you're adapting to the silver screen, like you want to stay as close to the source material as possible, or else why do it? Like, why right. did Tom Cruise have to play Jack Reacher when he's already Ethan Hunt? Like, he didn't need right. that other franchise character. He had one. My kid's obsessed with it at the begin with. Like, well, he didn't. That, you need that guy. Yeah, but that that was probably the studio saying we need somebody to bring some. We need a name to bring people into the well, show. I, well, Tom Cruise is beyond that because I think he just bought the rights for film. You know, I think Tom Cruise yeah. wanted to play Jack Reacher. Oh. Tom Cruise doesn't know he's 5'6". So was the Thetans telling him to do it. And no one tells Tom Cruise what to do. Just David Miskovich. So he told the Thetans to do it. Miskovich. <laughs> Miskovich. How do you say that? Oh, we're going to get sued now. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> do not go against Tell it, man. The worst thing you can do. Um, no kidding. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm going to keep watching. I'm on like episode four, season one. Watch it when I can. They're hour long shows, and it's a pretty intense show. So you kind of want to take breaks too in between. It's hard to like have that binge. Yeah. binge that yeah, that intense. I, I don't know. I'm like I I'm so used to like the weekly thing anyway. I'm not it's a binger. better way to yeah. It's a better way to watch TV. I've been doing the weekly thing with X Men. Like yeah, I love it. So I, love the I mean. Show. I mean, the only thing is, like, you know, you guys know the economy's kind of doing bad uh, in some areas. And, and I have a f- friend I worked with at my last job. His name's Ken. And he's a younger guy, younger, and he's married. He has a younger wife. And um, they needed a way to make some extra money. So she decided to, you know, work the corners. And uh, so the first night she goes out and... And Uh-oh. she's out there for a while, and he comes back and says, "Well, how'd you make out?" And she goes, "I made two hundred dollars and fifty cents." And he goes, "What a hole gave you fifty cents?" And she goes, "All of them." So there you go. There's the appropriate week. I don't think I get it, but I don't want you to explain what, it. So. Why? Um, it, well, how, yeah, I like what. You- What's two hundred dollars and fifty cents to, uh, divided by fifty cents? That's how many guys. Oh, I missed the hundred guys part. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I like that you worked it into the conversation, didn't preface it, so it took me a minute to figure out why you were talking about why your friend's <laughs> wife had to go into prostitution. I'm like, wow, you managed to take this darker than I did this week. Applause, <laughs> sir. Yes. <sighs> um. Speaking of things that are uh, kind of a little dark, but ninety-seven, uh, are you caught up? What? Are we, I mean, you blocked out of me. What is that, Dave? Oh, uh, X-Men 97. You All caught, caught up. up. Love it. My favorite thing I've watched on TV in a long time. Yeah. I mean, I, I like this week. I like the, the Rogue. Not Rogue. Um, Jubilee. Jubilee-centric uh, uh, story. Jubilee is probably my least favorite X-Men character, especially of this era. I liked the episode. I didn't like it as much as last week's episode. I thought last week's episode was fan freaking tastic. But I'm a big the fan Goblin of like, Queen. yeah, I like, I mean, I like that whole thing. Like I, you could just, I could talk about the psyche of Scott Summers for hours. Like, I just think it's so fascinating. You know, hmm, so good psychologist. I know. Cause he's the most, like in some ways, Scott is the most human of the Marvel characters. Right, he's so messed up, and he's got so many sexual hangups yeah. that it's like he's a fascinating person who always wants to do the right thing, but just like he just like like when you think about it, like you have this woman that you're like super obsessed with forever, and then it turns out you marry her clone who just wants you, and he's totally happy with you, but that's not good enough for you, 
right? You have your own version <laughs> of this thing that like just wants to love you. And you're like, no, man, no, <laughs> I want this other thing. And I'm going to throw this other person that I've loved and I've told loves me and like all this is good. I know. I, get rid of that. See, I want this thing that never quite gives me everything I want. It's just the brain of Scott Summers is, is fascinating. That's not a man that wants love. That's a man that wants to own someone. That's no, that, that's what I'm saying. You can make the argument that that's Scott Summers. I mean, like, and again, he's been written that way for a long time. Like, because yeah. Chris Claremont wrote J.D. Top Knot coming. Top Knot? I'm, my hair's my hair's pretty short right now. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I cut my long hair a long time ago. I don't quite get that. Uh, Kassan says, episode three was the best. Magneto unleashing his powers in the UN and refraining punishment. Was epic. Yeah, I agree. Episode three was great. I like four. A little bit more because I just I just like that story. Maddie Pryor has an Inferno Goth outfit. The agreed, my friend, agreed, <laughs> Joey. That outfit is one of the most epic in comics history, and they toned it down for the comic series, but not too much, and it worked. Like, yeah. and I think this I think this show did right by Maddie because I was gonna say like on the original con the original comics, Maddie like just kind of go like Scott. Okay, Claremont wrote Scott out right. He gave Scott his happy ending. Right, he had Maddie, he had his baby, and he was just done. Uh, Don said Cyclops has successfully navigated two long-term relationships with powerful telepaths. Impressive stats, man. The man, the man knows how to get chicks. No one can ever <laughs> say Scott Summers doesn't have game. Sp right? Spider-Man <laughs> had better game though. Ah, Spider-Man's is pretty good. Scott, like Scott, has telepaths, man. Like he does you can't hide from telepaths they know what you're thinking so i mean like <laughs> that's part of the thing that's part of what gets him in trouble so anyway, scott gets written out of the series right and then shooter decides to bring in x factor right and he pulls gene yeah. gray from the dead and brings scott back so he has scott ditch his family to be to be to go back to hounding gene i mean like and it sets the perfect origin up for the goblin queen who's remarkably sympathetic as a character, but never gets, never got really played into that in the era, right? It never gets played with how, how, how royally fucked she got. Like, she got like a super raw deal from her husband, right? But we never see that. And I thought this, I thought this show did a much better job of creating sympathy around the Madeline Pryor character. Because again, at the end of the episode, she's like, I don't know who I am. I just, I can't be around. I can't be here anymore. Which makes more sense than just being a wife and your husband goes, I'm out of here. And then you're evil. And then you don't exist anymore. I mean, it's just, I just I thought they did a better job in the show kind of summarizing like seven years of comics into like 30 minutes. I don't know. You, you think uh, Scott's got weird issues. What about Gene? Gene's got tons of weird. Gene's whole character is weird issues. Like, yeah. I mean, this, like how many times has she died or been cloned and not know who she was like well now yeah. in the comics her her and scott and wolverine have like you know a polyamory thing going on you know <laughs> so like gene gets to have everything she wants now and scott and wolverine are, and logan are both kind of you know reluctantly cool with it i don't know man it's interesting it's interesting scott fascinating fascinating character i love the show i absolutely love the show could you imagine if they tried to introduce that idea in like the sixties? All right, let's. <laughs> Could have well, actually, it would have fit more in the sixties. Yeah, doing the in the eighties. Yeah, the. I mean, like, yeah, it's fair. I mean, they pretty much shit on the code by the early seventies, anyway. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's. Uh, so we're all enjoying the show is really what we're saying. If you're not Great watching show. it, yeah, make sure you go watch it. Um. Uh, it's a little bit of social media madness, though. We did have, get some commentary about X Men ninety seven. Oh, because you missed that last week, uh, JD. Since we had Don here. Uh oh. No, I'm just leaving, so I don't want to do social media madness. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Oh, we can do uh, that. I Where's just learned. I just learned that we can do that, so I've been holding on to that joke for a while. Nice. Um. Since we had Don here, he did a whole breakdown of like what's different between the cartoon and the comics. If and, anybody uh, would know. Yes. Um, and we got a couple comments on that. And uh, one was uh, Bob Bob XX Bros. Oh, no, Box Bros. Okay. Box X Bros. 840 said, I love X Men, but Invincible makes it hard to watch because Invincible is amazing. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch it's almost like you can't I mean, watch different listen. shows. Like, what, oh, that's such a weird thing to say. Well, I can't watch this show because this other show exists. It's good. That's such a, <laughs> like, that's such a weird thing. It's like, I can't have pizza because I just really like cheeseburgers. What? The fuck does that mean? And then... <laughs> I mean, the boys exist, too. I mean, it's like, you know, right. kind of the same thing. They're just looking for blood and guts, it sounds like. I and like it. Snake... I'm, I like Invincible, too. But, I mean, like, it's such a weird thing to say. Yeah. And Snake Eyes 5683 said, It's cool, but I hate how they're trying to make Cyclops look cool and Gambit look like a scrub. Gambit was... Gambit, as we all know, is the cool factor on the team. Him getting one up by Magneto, old ass, is ridiculous. And then, of course, read, he goes to say, Disney read a comic, is read, read a say, comic Disney, book, man. Read a comic book. Disney is basically trying to loop in the Age of Apocalypse romance garbage between Magneto into the 616 verse. Uh, whatever Disney gets their mitts on these days, it manages to convolute. No, I think they're uh, incorporating parts from various comics and making making it work in a half hour cartoon, right? Like 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 they did in the nineties with the show to begin with? Mm, yeah. Or like they did with most of the MC MC movies. Like right? Think about it. Like they took elements was, from the comics and made Magneto, it work in in yeah. The Go reason ahead. they used no so the reason they used Magneto and Rogue in Age of Apocalypse is because they did they did hint at it in the comics before Rogue and Gambit was a thing. Like, I don't know, man. I, I never, if Gambit was so cool, he'd have been a bigger factor in the X-Men universe for a lot longer. Like he's just nostalgia for the nineties. Gambit's very much a one note character and Magneto. I'm sorry. Magneto leading the X-Men is just cool. He's just cool. He's way cooler than Gambit. Um, I, I heard someone, I saw people complaining about Gambit wearing the pink, uh, half shirt. And I'm like, where were, were you not alive in the 90s? Like, that's 90s fashion. Like, not 97 there's... fashion, 91 fashion, sure. But again, that's the team. This is the 1991 team. So right. I'll allow it. Like, you know, let your sexuality loose a little bit, bro. You're not, no one's trying to define you by the cartoons you watch. No. Well, not then. <laughs> but I mean, even here, like, I tease John about the Brody stuff all the time. But I mean, like, you have to qual- like, you're not just because you one of your characters is wearing a pink t shirt, pink half shirt doesn't mean like anyone's saying, Oh dude, you're watching that, you might be gay. Like yeah, grow up. Yeah. Man. Just because you're watching a show where all the women are wrapped up in tentacles doesn't mean that you're like Well disturbed. John Well <laughs> that's not always true. Uh, hold on. John, Don said uh, that Don had a good comment. Can we go back to that, Dave? Before I go to John. Uh. Don says Gambit is lame, and then, and Don is our foremost our foremost expert. So if Don says yes. Gambit is lame, Gambit is lame. But doesn't he have he had a lot of potential? I just don't think anybody's ever written him right, right? Chris Claremont did, and Chris Claremont's been off the books for twenty for thirty years. Drew says, yeah. "What did you guys think about the second season of Invincible?" I don't think we've actually watched it. I don't think any of us actually I watched it. I've seen two episodes. No. I haven't. I because, but the the new season of anime is just starting, so I got wrapped up in that. So that means so I'll, I'll follow, but I, it's there. It's like watching the boys though. Like, I, I think we've discussed this before. It's like, there's only so much pain and anguish that my brain can take before I need I, something to cleanse know. the palate. I hear what you're saying. I just, I really like Robert. I really love the first like hundred some odd issues of invincible. Like, Oh, the storylines. Yes. The storylines. Awesome. I think, yes. the, I think the writing is really good. I like yes. the Mark Grayson character. I like him as well. I just haven't, I haven't made the time to watch the show. You know, a lot going on. If Dave said, hey, we're, we're doing a missable next week, I would have to sit down and watch the whole show. So, but I just haven't yet. Yeah. And, and I'll finish it too. I don't think I'll ever finish The Boys because that was the, like, so like the writing for Invincible is a storyline and it's a good storyline. Right. The writing for The Boys is just how much, how much gore can we put on the screen at once? You know, a I lot know. of it. So... Yeah, but no, the the writing is good for Invincible, but I will and I will um, finish it. Uh, da, 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 da. okay. Now, here's an important question because <clears throat> last week we planned to Godzilla X Kong. Um, I don't think you got the chance to see it, John, because you were traveling. Yep. But I know JD saw it. I did see so it. So I'm just I'm just curious what you thought. 
It was the stupidest damn movie I've ever seen in my entire life. I loved it so much. It was. <laughs> that, just, oh my god! Perfect. That sounds like every That's review perfect. I've heard of it. <laughs> so it's so dumb, but it's so earnest. There's so much plot jammed into this dumb movie about monsters, and it's not like. Like Godzilla minus one was so heartfelt and so smart, and there was this monster, like the complete swing in direction. This is just brainless and like a, a lot of work going into a plot. But fucking a, was it fun? Hang on, let's get a, let's get an expert in here, Andrew. <laughs> yes, no, the, no, this is uh, you know totally valid. Come here. Come here. Let's let's hear with the target audience because let's be honest, this is the yeah. target audience. Come up here. Yeah. I want you to tell them what you what you thought about Godzilla X Kong. You got to get close, get close, and look in the camera. What do you think of Godzilla X Kong? Right. What was your favorite part of Godzilla X Kong? The same thing. Nobody cares. Oh, you have so many. Pick one. Just pick one that you want to talk about. Yeah, just one. What? It was like sweating in the um, in the Coliseum. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, one more question about Godzilla uh -huh. X Kong. What was your what's better movie, Godzilla X Kong or Godzilla minus one? What was the better movie? Godzilla X Kong. Thanks, buddy. You can go back. <laughs> Tar target audience. Yes. Target audience. Yeah, that movie right. was made for eight year olds. And like I had, I think I had such a good time because I was sitting next to him, and like he's being like. I don't think he's got a future in podcasting, quite frankly. Um, he just kept looking and goes, Dad, Dad, this is what's going to happen. And he's like trying to break <laughs> down the story. And he's talking about it with such passion and vigor in his voice that it's, I'm, I'm looking like, oh my God, he's me. Like, and I just had the think, best time with my kid in yeah, this movie. And that was kind of what her uh, conclusion was. My daughter oh, cool. Wants Veda wants to do a podcast with Andy. Andy, man, you want to see something? Hey, buddy. Come here. But dad. <laughs> come, here, come, here, come here. I know he's watching. He's watching his YouTube shows right now. He doesn't want to be on Dad's YouTube show. No, you got You got You got a comment. Uh, my buddy Don. He says his daughter Veda wants to podcast with you. Would you like to do that sometime? Maybe. Maybe. All right. Just wanted to show uh -huh. you. You got, you got a fan message, so I figured you know, render on to Caesar. You know, you know, you know yeah. they, they do well enough, and you'll be living off the proceeds of their podcast. Dude. Yeah, but you I'll know, get just divorced. Put them on <laughs> I'll get divorced first because my wife won't <laughs> like having my kid. She's not gonna like that I put them on the show tonight. But you know, she don't watch your show, so she don't know. Don't hurt her. <laughs> I'm gonna be in wow, trouble. He's... I'm gonna be in so much trouble tomorrow. <laughs> okay then. Um, but yeah, that also was pretty much our conclusion too. Like, it's a dumb popcorn movie and like if you're expecting that going in you're gonna love it if you're expecting shakespeare you're gonna be like nah <laughs> you shouldn't expect shakespeare from a godzilla movie and the fact that we kind of got it the last time was what made that movie so special right but this one right. i mean like it was more fun than i was expecting and it's a ton of fun like and he's I, right godzilla sleeping in the coliseum kind of rules you know oh yeah I, that was I, that was one of my favorite scenes i have one beef with that movie there's and I haven't seen it, but, but I have there's a, a lot of beef I, in that movie. A lot of big old I, I know. monsters. But 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 I've got a beef with it because of the agreement with what is it Universal, right? Or no, who's doing Toho the, and Legendary? Legendary, Legendary, Legendary right? That because of the agreement between Toho and Legendary, they can't release Godzilla minus one on physical media in, for I think another like six months to a year. Just buy the Japanese Blu-ray. I I know I saw it out. Um, I just well, I just actually that might would probably worth it too. I should probably just do that. I'm just but, who am I talking to? I'm talking to the guy who watches anime in Japanese. What do you care? True, um, true, uh, but you know, I want I want the English version as well. It's just I mean not not the English dub. I want the I want the English subtitles and all that. So I don't know. There. Now I'm going oh, to buy my. it. <laughs> Um, and now you're going to Amazon and you're going to buy the, the Blu-ray. Damn straight I... I knew you were. I'm like, I'm wondering what's the problem. Like, you know how to... You, more than anybody, know how to do this. I, for, so, I forgot it had been... But, but you know what? I still... I it just... But, but yeah, it, it because of that, it, they, the one that won an Oscar can't release the physical media while the one that's just... Well, you know, anyway. <laughs> Don... Making money hand over fist. Don... Oh, yeah. uh, Oh, yeah, it's doing really well. Don posed the question 
during the podcast and was like, well, what's next? You know, where where, do, where does this franchise go next, right? And me joking around, because I do, I said space, right? because that's always the death of a franchise like this anyway, when they go in space, like Hellraiser in space, Jason in space. Leprechaun in space. Leprechaun in space. But, like, I was just joking around. And, of course, uh, the, the app that I use that creates those... Um, Highlander clips. in space. Oh, my God. Don't... Uh, yeah, that well... Happened. That happened. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The quickening. So the, Continue. The, the, the app I use that creates those clips picked that as a clip. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is fun. And I, and I put it up on our social media. It's got the most views of any clip that I've ever put out there. It's got over 4,000 views on YouTube. It's got over almost 1,200 on TikTok. And it's got a lot of comments. So, <laughs> Please don't read them all. Uh, oh, wait. What's, what's Drew say here? They can, pull, they can pull literally any monster from that pyramid now. They can, except for Gamera. Gamera's not owned by Toho. Right. Yeah. So and Gamera's pretty cool. And they've put out some... Re- the last few movies from Gamera were actually really good. So This is a Shin Gamera, right? No, I think there is a Shin Gamera. It, if there? there, if there is, it's a, it's probably something that a fan did, not an I official there release. Was. I, there was I have movie. every, I have everything that they have, that they released for Gamera. And I no swear Shin to Gamera. God, they released a Shin Gamera last year. I could be wrong. All right, so, so over on on uh, YouTube, here's some of the comments. Oh, we're still doing uh, this. Yeah, Ben Dover says more. Ben Dover. Oh my God, I just got that. You they, just you know, got they, that? They, they they just trolled you, Dave. Well well done. Do you Said have more Prince off. Albert in a can? <laughs> Is your refrigerator running, Dave? Jokes <laughs> uh, from the said, 50s are, are puzzling Dave on this show. <laughs> uh, said, more hollow earth, they opened the door to many possibilities. Okay, they I did. don't disagree with that comment, but the username got me. All right, you got me. Um, Reach Soulzilla said, "There's so many more villains, though, especially Bol Bolain, B I O L A N T, Iolante, and Destroya." Yes, yeah, those were two. That was were two pretty good, pretty good mm-hmm. ones too. I just, uh, I mean, I just watched said, Destroya a couple of weeks ago again. I re- rewatched it. Uh, M H N says Rodan is still alive. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, because Don did say they killed off Rodan. Um, well, they're saying that they're get, they might do a Mothra one next. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I want a Mothra movie. I think Mothra always works better as Godzilla's like you know, angry ex-wife. Well, That's they, why I always yeah, with them. I don't know why. That's just how so I always process it. They in my they, head. they they did confirm that was it the that the little girl that was talking to King Kong is actually one is of the, one of the twin. I thought that was yeah. such a. I saw that and I'm like, now that's how you tie. Now that's how you do cross media product. Like that's yeah. that. I saw that and I'm like, goddamn, well done, well done. I was very happy with that reveal. Uh, were you? I was. I uh, thought it was great. Uh, and I'm sorry, I, I was mistaken. These are the comments from TikTok, not from YouTube. Um, and then what was the other thing? Um, Young Beaton said Mecha Kong. Like, eh, we got Mecha Godzilla. Do we, like, why would you do Mecha Kong? You know? We just did the Scar King. I feel like we did Kong's story. That's what the, uh, that's, I forget it, the director's name. Adam, I forget his last name. He said that's the direction they're going in. Is they're going to do something more. Because this was like a Kong story that Godzilla just happened to show up and save the day. The next one's going to be more of a Godzilla story that also happens to feature Kong. Okay, I could see that. I mean, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where it's like space Godzilla. Have, yeah, and well, and then uh, Randy threw in uh, throw in um, uh, Ult- Ultraman, not Ultraman. Who's the one? Oh, Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was yeah. just like... Uh, I would okay. watch that. I would like that. Jet Jaguar, that would be cool. Well, have you seen Have you seen the... Um, was it Toho put out a couple mini Godzilla movies, like a couple of minutes long each? But John, one... you know the answer to that question. What? John, you know the answer to whether or not I've seen them. Yes, you've seen them. Um, right. so, so, seen them. No, you haven't? Oh, okay. No, I don't watch no, anime. There's like, okay. No, no, not anime. No, the live action. Kind of like, live action. I mean, they're, like they're four minute pers- movies? They're, they're CGI, but one had, what was it? Um, 
uh, what is it? Got Megalon. One had Megalon, and another one had yeah. Like if you look on YouTube, they're they're out. Toho put them on you. YouTube. I believe and they're you. for free. Hmm? Oh, they're free. We'll put in the link, and I'll watch. So, it. Hmm. so, so J Bruce six nine seven four over on YouTube said. It stops, and please, hopefully, someone makes something original. I'm so over remakes at this point. <laughs> yeah, no, they they really the, the, they really bro, bro, you're on the wrong show. That's what you you know. I'm sorry, I got bad news for you. And I said, I said, you, you that no, there's no no sign of that anytime soon. Why would so. you respond to that comment for a Godzilla thing though? I mean, like, I don't know. Drew Drew already said they can literally pull any money. Oh, I'm sorry. Them. I thought I didn't. Yeah, oh, I realized. Got I realized as I clicked it, I said that I showed that one already. There's yeah, a million, there's a lot a million of people, monsters. Yeah. A lot of people are saying uh, uh, Destroya. The, Destroya would be good. Yeah. Um, Space Godzilla. Yeah. Megalon um, would, be, would be good Megalon's too. Good. I like Violent, too. Those are all good calls. Hmm. And Gigan? Gigan. Gigan. Oh, that's the other one. That's the other one that they've got out. Mega, Mega Gigan um, versus, Godzilla, versus Godzilla. It's really that's, cool. Yeah. That's the movie. It's Godzilla and Jet Jaguar versus Gigan and Megalon. So I mean, yes, but there's another. There's another one of those mini movies. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. I know, but that makes sense that they would have all four of those. That makes. I think. I think basically what I got from this, these comments, I got from a how popular just this one clip was, and the comments. I mean, most of the stuff Godzilla stuff was popular this week. Um, Is that the, the like you said? There's an audience for this. They don't care about um, super elaborate stories. They want to see monsters. I disagree. Each other. This was a super elaborate story. Was it? There was yes. There was so much plot. They info dumped at mm. random points in the movie. Like there was a lot going on. I didn't say it was the, good. I didn't say it was logical. I said there was a lot. On. It was the humans were of... basically just there for uh, exposition. So, yes, that's. But I mean, isn't that? With the exception of Godzilla minus one, which is special, that's what these people usually do in these movies. Yeah, like it just um, kind of is. Oh, and Randy said that uh, the, the 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 scene with the the little monkey and King Kong, where the, those scenes in the beginning of the movie, they're more entertaining if you give them their own dialogue in your head. I agree. <laughs> you can kind of well, MST three K it. Yeah. yeah, you kind of vibe with what they're saying to each other. I love when Kong picked up the little guy and was smashing the other monkeys with him. That was great. Yeah, I can't. I uh, gotta see this movie because I told Andy I'm gonna do that someday when we get into a fight. I'm gonna use him to just beat other people up. I'm gonna whip my kid will, and smash him into people. Speaking of smashing, oh, if you're if you're watching, you know, um, please smash that like button. Oh, you got a and, new one? Yes, I like it. <laughs> I was ready to click the button. That's even better. <laughs> Really That's punctuates the anger the like that we button. do this with. Yeah. Yeah. Hulk smash. And click the subscribe button go. and the bell for notifications so you don't miss us when we go live. <laughs> I missed. I like that. That's smashing your head. Um, oh, wait, 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 John. I didn't watch the movie. What's wrong with you, bud? Yeah, I'm surprised. You usually like. I mean, did you? I were you I just did... were your were your expectations just too high after minus one? Well, there is that, but it's not, it's, it's just, I haven't had time. I get it. Um, I get it, it, it was a matter of time. So like, I'll, I'm going to go see it next week. Next What were you probably. doing today? You could have gone today before the show. Uh, yard work that had built oh. up over the last three weeks and you know, it's spring here on the East coast. And if you don't take care of it now, you're buried under pricker bushes and ticks and crap. Literally buried. So. The East coast is under earthquakes now. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was freaky. I'm sorry, that was freaky. So, we have it is right. freaky, but we're not used to it. it. I'm sure if somebody from the West Coast was over oh, here, yeah. they'd be like, "Oh, oh it's yeah, another one." Uh, they would have ignored it. In our in our Geek World All Stars chat, um, uh, the girls from Popism Prison Power Pack podcast are in California, and they and like when I said it was a what was it? It was a four. It was a four point eight based in New Jersey. Right, four point eight. That she was like, "Yeah, that's cute." So, <laughs> <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> Hassan says, I'm impressed it's ranked in $361 million so far. It's impressive. It is impressive. They're doing great. Oh, yeah. how, how often does the fourth movie in a series like just kind of blow things out of the water? Like Transformers. The, yeah. Unfortunately. the fourth Transformer trim we did really well. 
Oh, right? all of them did really well until. But like, this the one's like two. exceeded. Like this one's made more than any of them. Granted, one of them got released yeah. during the pandemic, but I mean, like mm. it's doing great. All right. Well, again, that's it for social media madness. So, Thanks. if you would like to be uh, follow us on social media and be part of social media madness for next week, here's a good friend Don to tell you more. You enjoying the show? Do you want to be part of social media madness? Easy peasy. Head on over to SuperheroSpeak.com. You'll find all the links to our social media. You'll find the show uploaded there as well. Comic reviews by Chris. You can even go in the archives and find old comic reviews by yours truly. Absolutely. So again, that's SuperheroSpeak.com. Make sure and check that out. Make sure to engage on our social media. Speaking of social media, you know, Superhero Speak is part of the Geek World All-Star Podcast Network. That podcast network includes great shows like the Pop Prison Power Podcast, Colt 45, Fans on Patrol, the Gorilla Brain Podcast, the So Wizard Podcast, and Super Hero Speak. That's right. You go to the X-Men app, I, I mean the X app, hashtag GW All-Stars, and you will not be disappointed. And you might as well do it before that app is dead. Well, listen, now it's time to go back to the show, and I'm going to be looking to see if JD makes a comment about sex or doing something to a woman's anatomy to see if John gets flustered or beat red, while at the same time speaking with confidence and zeal when he's talking about Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, and the rest of the My Little Pony crew. Back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> a child is in the room. But he's got his headphones on. So do I, luckily. <laughs> John, you're muted. Hey, you don't want him hearing about Pinkie Pie, really. I'd rather he hear it from me than on the street, quite frankly. <laughs> wait, what is, wait, what is Don asking here? I have no idea. What Don, Don says, what the hell, or what the fuck, is a cinephile mortician. Any, any word on when ends in file, it's sus. I mean... Oh, oh man. God. Yeah, yeah, I did play the one that I gates. Um we are trying to resurrect like a dead films, so What where did that come from? Cinephile Mortician? Did I miss something? I don't know. I that, no, no, that's that's my that's my my Oh, I didn't read your name. thing. Oh, jeez. So, jeez, you know, I put so much thought into these like it's that's one of the few things that I spent a week thinking about. I know. Dave and I Dave. put our Twitter handle and you yeah. actually put thought into it so we don't read them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I mean, I should point out that's not just the that's where you can find us on Twitter, on on YouTube, on uh, all our social media. Just look for yeah. Don't look up cinephile mortician. Uh, you probably <laughs> uh, uh, it'd probably it'd probably be bad. Probably. So, all right. Uh, make sure Andy's ears are covered, though. He's got headphones, and I got headphones, and okay, Don because burying me left and right with these things because you know. We're going to take a break. I never feel like more of a creep than when Don puts on that commercial. And I'm like, is this how I come off when I make jokes? Am I that much of a freaking vile creep? I, I honestly, look, in Don's defense, I honestly do feel that was really aimed at John about being. Prudish. Oh, it is. But, but I mean, like, I feel like I catch a lot of strays in that. I mean, he one. could have said it about me, too. He could have said it about. Well, I make he, jokes. He should have like, said, like, like, said, said doing Dave to and JD and, make jokes about a woman. I, I mean, like, but it'd be like, like doing things to women. It sounds so creepy. And I'm like. No, no. He's, he's like, going for me, and you're just collateral damage. That's, that's what I'm saying. saying. I'm catching <laughs> strays. And I'm like, I feel like I come off a thousand times more creepy than the brony. <laughs> <laughs> you're both creepy. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's take a quick commercial break. And be back. A Randy, is this a Randy commercial? Is it new? Yes. Uh, it's, it was new last week, but oh, I didn't see it. it. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, no. podcast. I like this. You like dry burgers or wet burgers? What kind of a question is that? I want this thing to come in my mouth. <laughs> what, a, what a wild thing to say. What an insane! No, but I understand what, what an you're, insane thing to but say. But I know what you mean because I want a burger that's like the cheese is so melted, and I want to squeeze it, and it's like, <laughs> it's like disgusting. It's like a swamp of like cheese and like wet. What is that? You ever there? immediately? Do, you ever do something and immediately regret it? Yeah, that's well, fine. That's <laughs> well, obviously that's going to be a clip. It and some podcasts are like this. And you use it to pry out this lid, and the inside is like a little oh, tiny ball. Plutonium. 
And it looks so freaking cool. It'd be a, a really good piece to put on my desk or something. There's no way that's real. It's real. He destabilized the core when it dropped. It broke. And literally, he just got fried with radiation. And he died? No. Yeah. I was about to make fun of his the way he talked. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but then I found out he died. And we would never. We would literally never talk about it. <laughs> Josh. Josh. <laughs> what? You can't do that. <laughs> Tough week, Josh. Poor <laughs> Josh. Stop. Dude. Joshua. Is that freaking radiation? I think I'm in a bit of a pickle right now. <laughs> Is this freaking Chernobyl right now? <laughs> oh, no. But only one podcast is where you can get in-depth analysis like this. And they test it out and realize that it does bubble when people get pissed off. Mood slime. Mood slime. <laughs> saying, saying that out loud sounds different. We all have it. We all seen it. Um, it's the slime that comes out when you get angry or upset. Speaking Mood of slime. which, did Egon fuck the slime? Uh, why did they? Why did they get? Why did they get accusatory? And why did he get super defensive all of a sudden? It's like, they, he's like, you didn't. He's like, you didn't. Did, you didn't did. sleep with. You're not sleeping with it, are you, Ray? And they're like, I got blown by a ghost. I think I would. Fuck it. He was trying to conjure the ghost back. He just dips his dick in it. Come on, come back. You are now listening to Call 45. This is Beat'em Down. And I'm Random Randy Savage. Find us on all your podcatching apps like Podbean or Spotify. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or just go to wwwcult 4 podcastcom Also, check out our YouTube for that sweet, sweet video content. Cult 45, the only podcast that puts hair on your chest. <laughs> What, wait, 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 what, 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 come on, say it. I, I don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> that burger thing, man. I mean, like, <laughs> how do you mm, say that? Like, tasty burgers. Uh, <laughs> Does it really bother you that much? <laughs> I don't, I don't partake. So for me. <laughs> That's pretty gross. If you partake, be my guest. But you don't like burgers? No, I love burgers. <laughs> I don't want to have that type of relationship with my burgers. Oh, I see. Like, that's not my type of vibe. You know, if that's your vibe, that's cool, man. Do that vibe. But that's like, for me, it's a little much. Then we have three of the coldest men I've ever heard from in my life. I might get making fun of people. I enjoy it sometimes. But. That dude died because he's an idiot, but he died. And I, they're like, I, wow. You're you're muted, John. Your mic's off. I keep sorry. A couple <laughs> of people died uh working with the Demon Core. If you it, it's called the Demon Core because of that. Well, um it and one of you know, like they were just I bumped the thing that was keeping the two halves together and everybody within a certain radius got a lethal dose of radiation within well a couple of femtoseconds so like if you go onto youtube and you look up a guy named kyle hill he literally did a whole show on, uh or a couple of shows on the demon core and it is wild what i happened i know good, I, man. I find it weird. i don't know i have a hard time believing that video is real um i'm gonna assume the fact that that for the simple fact that my brother-in-law works at the salem nuclear power plant and you're not allowed to bring it uh, phone in and film what you're doing so the, the, was it, the, it wasn't a film i mean this the thing that kyle hill did is 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 he, no, no, he but just I'm talking did about a that video, video the commercial. yeah I, I don't know about the video because it'd be a work it, well no because the it, it, the radiation would have here fun fact the manhattan project the the only company in, in the united states that knew about exactly where that was happening anywhere in the u.s was McDonald's. Kodak. Oh. No, it was Kodak because they were trying to sell their film and everywhere that they were working in the Manhattan Project, the film that they were trying to sell was bad because the radiation was hitting it and, and, and bleaching it out. So they knew, so 
Kodak had a special agreement with the United States government not to say anything because they knew exactly where they were working on it in every single place. So it, any kind of film in that era that was made during working with any of that fissionable material would, wouldn't have come out because the radiation would have destroyed it. So like I was saying, pretty cold Sorry. and callous from those guys. <laughs> and if it's assuming it's real, if it's not real. Science with John O'Grady. Yes. I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> now, as for Randy's show, I'm pretty sure Egon just like snuggled with the slime. Because how do you have sex with slime? Like he's just sticking it in the slime and that just adds more slime. You didn't now see we're, the Orville, now did we're you? Back, now we're back you, to the burger thing. You didn't right? see that one, <laughs> that one episode all, of the Orville, circle. did you? It's, it's all going full circle. circle. So, Randy, you've outdone Maybe yourself. Maybe that's <laughs> all right next, well, time I see uh... that, next time i see that one i'm just gonna take a pee break <laughs> speaking of uh of never mind uh yeah let's just let's just let's just go in on the news all right oh you know what we skipped over an article i we we haven't talked about it we talked about x-men 97 i wanted to talk about it during um our 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 x-men 97 talk um, just real quick, because there's been no updates also since it's been announced, but, uh, uh, Bo DeMeo, the creator yeah. of X-Men 97, he wrote the first two seasons right before the show premiered, was fired by Disney, and neither him nor Disney has made any comment on why it just was like, he was just gone. Like, he got, he got, all and the I was about to say, the rumor is he was fired because he has an OnlyFans account. But, like, there's been no confirmation of that from either uh, party. So, the thing is, they have already said they were going to do a season three. Um, do you think this affects season three? They haven't hired a new showrunner. So, yeah. I'm, I am of the mind that they will probably bring him back eventually because Disney always overreacts to these things. See Gun, comma, James. Yeah. Um, who cares? The guy had an OnlyFans account. I mean, like the only the only reason I could think that would be an issue is if Disney. he created it after getting the X Men ninety seven gang and was using that as like, oh well, look, I'm famous now because of that. So go check out my OnlyFans. That's really not how OnlyFans works, though. Like, you just get famous with OnlyFans because you're good looking, right? Yeah. Like, no one cares what you actually do. They want to see what you do. <laughs> oh my god, that, that was bad. That, that, um, that, that only fans thing is ridiculous. I mean, oh, got, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of people losing jobs when they're only fans, but they're making extra money with only. So part of me is kind of like, I don't know. I'm kind it's of actually, my... it's funny because a couple, a lot of people, a lot of articles have come out. A lot of people have talked about this. Only like a few people are really, it's like with any social media thing yeah. are moving to the top and really making a lot of money with it. But yet, people are going on there and aren't making money and then are getting fired from their jobs and then they're screwed. That's how they're Literally. getting fired from their jobs. Um, <laughs> I left that hanging there for you. Yeah. Well, um, I, that's, that's also how they're getting fired from their jobs. They're leaving it hanging. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm of the, I'm of the mind that you should be able to do what you want, but, but actions have consequences. And, but Disney is famous. They have a morality yeah. clause in their mm -hmm. contracts, and I'm sure that that's part of it. So, so I'm of them. Okay, if you need money, I'm okay. I mean, I think I'm okay with you doing what you need to do to make money. Like we got to do what we got to do to provide for families and provide and put food on the table. I I am not going to be the morality police in those kind of situations. Right. I, like, exactly. Like I'm a very utilitarian. Don't hurt anybody, and I'm okay with it. Right, like I think I think that having an OnlyFans page is way not as way okay as compared to like, hey, I work for I'm a lawyer for film. Right, here, here, you know, I think you're a way worse person. In here's the other thing I think is weird about it, and I'm I'm gonna be completely honest, and this might come off weird, but in today's world, I don't get the point of OnlyFans. There is so much I porn readily available on the internet. Why would you pay to see someone you don't know's pictures? I have Unless a there's somebody really famous that you can't see otherwise, or I don't know. I have a the theory. Day. I have a theory. I think the reason OnlyFans works is because it's like, I'm using this term in loose words, but it's a relationship. Like you have like, 
an like an association with the create with the content creator. It's like you can talk to them, you can have like interaction with them. So like you can see their stuff. And I, I meant that not for me. I agree with no, you. And, I don't and it understand makes sense it. because it's the it's the it's like I mean we all had younger days. I don't know. You know, I'm sure John will deny straight up, and I don't know about you, JD, but you know. We've all probably been to a strip club at some point in our lives. I'm a teenager. And, I, can, I cannot admit to that. Okay. Keep but <laughs> but we've also had the friend who, maybe you guys haven't, but you've had a friend who goes too much. Oh, I had And de develops a relationship, quote unquote, with a stripper and thinks they're dating them, but they're not. She's just using him to get more money, you know. No, I had a friend who actually was dating a stripper. Okay, well, I had a friend who claimed he was dating a stripper, but it was like, no, she was just, he was giving her gifts and spending all his money on her, and it was just like, it was sad, and you tried to tell him, and he got mad. It's like, no, she's my girlfriend. So, like, like in, in pro wrestling, we call that it's still real to me, or, like, you know, you're a mark, right? Yeah. That, those, yeah, are, yeah. those are things. Um so I, I agree with you. I think that I don't I don't want to spend my money on OnlyFans. I, like, I just, it's not for me. I don't think yeah. that's worth it. But there's a lot of people that do. And I think it has a lot to do with, like, that you do have this, relationship's a weird word, but you have this, like, interpersonal play with the person who's creating the content. So you feel like you know them, which is weird in of itself. And again, it's not for me necessarily. And I'm of the mind that, like, why are you... Uh, if why if you have a good job and you're making money, why do you need to do the OnlyFans? That's where that like why does Bo DeMeo need to do that when like you're you have Disney? Right. I don't understand. That's where I'm at. Like why would you risk? I don't understand. Like the risk, life is risk reward scenario. Why are you risking a dream gig to post pictures of you waxing your ass? I don't understand that. Like that's where I lose. That's I don't want to say lose respect. I don't want to say like I don't. That's where I lose understanding of all. So like I said, if you need a job, I get that. I understand people who need to support you know themselves, support families, and right whatever whatever floats your boat. You know, do unto others, don't hurt people. I get that. I just don't understand why you take the risk. That's uh, where I, that's where I'm like. Don, Don says OnlyFans is where simps and incels hang out. I think I heard that. From kids around the neighborhood say that you know what he ain't, he ain't wrong when with don saying that i'm picturing you know the uh steve buscemi uh clip of him in high school with carrying the skateboard and what up fellow teenagers i, I pictured don walking around the neighborhood what up fellow kids <laughs> I, I mean like i don't think he's necessarily wrong because Don says many of the popular only fans creators don't even chat with their viewers they have dedicated person to do that yeah but that's film man is that like you're not really talking to them, but you're talking to them. You know what I'm saying? Like you, like the, the part of the fantasy is the person either, you know, likes to believe it because it's part of the show or actually believes it like, like pro wrestling. Like, again, I don't, it's not for me. I'm not interested in, in being on either side of that equation, quite frankly. But I mean, like, I just don't get, I just don't understand in the, in the, in the grand scheme of risk board scenarios. Like I always read the story about the woman who was a teacher who was like, who got fired because she was an OnlyFans. She's like, well, I make three times as much doing my OnlyFans. I'm like, well, okay, I get that. You know? And uh, we don't pay teachers enough by far. We do not pay teachers enough, let me tell you that. But I mean, like, I don't know. I just don't, I don't understand why a writer for Disney needs to do that. I just, that that puzzles me. I don't get it. I want to I want to go on record and say I really hate the term incel. Just, just saying that. The involuntary celibates? I don't know. Yes. Don't know why? Because somebody who didn't lose his virginity until he was older, you know, uh, it's insulting. <laughs> Fair. I mean, like a lot of them use that term themselves. Like, like a lot of the people in that persuasion for that line, that you know, they that's that's their term. My God, the youth today is stupid. All right. Um. <laughs> You're not saying much about this article. Uh, all right, let's move on then. Um, all right, so this was the big news this week, guys. The really big news. Uh, Julia Garner is cast as Shala Ball version of uh, Silver Surfer in the coming Fantastic Four movie. And the internet lost its collective head. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> what do we think of this case? I'm gonna, I have a theory, and I'll get to that, but I'm, I want to ask you guys about this casting first. So, John, what do you think? Don't know the actress? Sure, why not? 
I have no opinion. I don't know. I don't know who she is. I haven't seen her or anything, probably. So, you know, okay. <clears throat> um, you're probably not first. You're not probably not familiar with the Shallow Ball version of Silver Surfer either. No, I'm so. not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not. Um, but it doesn't bother me. I knew there was one. So, you know, okay. All right, JD, what did you think? I kind of get it because, like, um, I'm not outraged, but I kind of understand because I feel like we're getting the MCU version of the Silver Surfer and we're not getting the Silver Surfer. You know, so I kind of, <clears throat> it's like I talked about earlier, like, like if I want Jack Reacher, I want the six foot six inch Jack Reacher. You know, um, so I kind of. Not kinda, the fun size? Yeah, not, <laughs> not the fun size Jack Reacher. You know, <laughs> it's good. That's really good. Um, so I kind of get that. Um, Shalabal is in in the MCU six one six continuity is Norrin Rad's love, right? Norrin Rad yeah. sacrificed himself to Galactus to become the herald to save his planet, specifically so the love of his life could survive. It's a great little story, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I know where Dave's going with this, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna steal his thunder, but I don't know. Like I can I kind of I'll let. I'll let Dave kind of sum up because I can't go to my thoughts without him laying out his <laughs> scenario. Okay, so both uh, anyway, real quick, J Drew and and um, Kassan both say that uh, she was great in those arcs, and I have, no, I have no issue. I don't know her as an actress. Um, I haven't seen anything, she's in, and I don't have an issue with it. Um, so my theory, my working theory, is that they're the Fantastic Four movie because hey, everyone, don't forget we're in the multiverse right now we're in the multiverse saga still yeah. so the fantastic four does not take place in the main continuity that is an alternate version and that's why we're getting ball of gall and then Child. something's going to happen i'm sorry what did i say you a series of squeaks that did not sound like shallow ball oh okay um and that something's going to happen and they're going to get pushed into our universe and eventually we will get um the silver surfer that we know but Yes, she's from the Earth X storyline, which is like an alternate future storyline from the comics. So, uh, so you, you think they're going to start it like that, though? Like, not in universe, but that yeah. is why they've already that said is, them. Uh, yeah, and, and that is why all the artwork is hinting that it takes place in the 60s. But, like, mm -hmm. how could the Fantastic Four have existed in the 60s, but no one's ever heard of them? Oh, you know? uh, they're going to do this with Deadpool, right? I guess I really like, never said anything. Well, here's the thing: is that I no, because, the no, okay. Here's the thing: I, I want to point this out too. Everyone keeps forgetting there is a Secret Wars uh, movie Movies. on the on the the what do you read? Plan Horizon Horizon. Yeah, yeah that's the word I was looking for. And like, it's one of the a, few that they've said they're not they're not. And Secret it. Wars Two was on Battle World where they collapsed all the multiverse universes into one in Marvel right. Comics, and I think that's what they're doing with that. Good. Um, I'm of the mind that the Fantastic Four should be adventurers. So if they're like, and that's what they should, they should be discovering things. That's the best Fantastic Four stories. So to have them be from an alternate universe is fine with me. I like it. Now my vibe is uh, Johnny Storm, Frankie Ray. That's from the Six One Six. Frankie Ray becomes Nova, the Herald of Galactus. So I have a hunch that we're going to circumvent Nor and Rad in this story and have the story like uh, the unrequited love story between. Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, and Shala Ball, the Silver Surfer, because that, one, I think it'll be a, an interesting visual, right? With like the fire and the silver, like I think that will look cool on screen, and I think there's stuff you can do with it. Joseph Quinn, very good actor, great casting as Johnny Storm, like, and you have something there. It makes sense to and me. And isn't that kind of what they did in the Fantastic Four two movie with the Silver Surfer? Like he develops a relationship with Sue. And yeah. that's what makes them want to save humanity. Yeah, mm. it, they, yeah, they did do that, but I'm glad they're not doing that with Sue here. Like, I'm because Sue, it's I want especially for a first one, I want them to focus on keeping Sue and Reed because there's a lot of work they have to do to make that work because people are going to jump on how problematic that relationship, yeah, well, has always been, quite frankly. Um, so if they can, and with Vanessa Kirby and Pedro Pascal playing the characters, big age difference. So there's going to be some people up in arms to begin with. So you got to assuage, 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 assuage. I can never say that word. Assuage. 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 Thank you. You need to assuage that. And like them having a functional, maybe not perfect, but functional relationship 
would be better there. So I like that this gives Johnny something to do because I don't think Johnny had a lot to do in any of the Fantastic Four movies, quite frankly. So that's the first one. I mean, he's just kind of a guy. I mean, like he's just there for comic relief. A lot of it, like it's not. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I want to the... see character. I want to see character work, and I think that that's my vibe on this. So that's where it's going. Oh, I mean, Roger Corman's he he actually saved the planet himself. I mean, it's it's funny too because when, when they had um when they had how many views? Do you see how many views that episode got? Not great. No one even cared when we talked about it. But that's the whole <laughs> thing. They they cast Chris Evans as uh, Johnny Storm in those movies because of the. What was the another teen movie that he yeah, was not in? Another, not another not, teen movie. Not another teen movie. Right. So it's like because he handsome it, it was look. he was handsome and it was funny. He was he, he they, she showed comedic chops and that's what they wanted for Johnny Storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think which they're going to go that route. Again. Which is a lot of Johnny Storm. I mean, that's did you watch Stranger Things season four? Eddie Munson, a lot of that too. He showed a lot of charisma, a lot of yeah. personality. You have to have that with Johnny. Like he, that's that's the character. But I want to see something from him too. And if it's the way I think they're going to go with it, I mean, like, it makes sense. Like, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm in. I'm cool. Yeah. It'll, it'll be nice if Sue and Reed have chemistry, like the actors actually have chemistry. This I'm going to assume oh, they did a bunch yeah. of screen testing with this, right? To find two actors that have that. And to be frank, Pedro Pascal has, has like chemistry with everybody he's on I set, think, with, including a puppet. I think it was <laughs> uh, the Fox. <laughs> I think the Fox Fantastic Four movies missed the boat with that because yeah. I felt like they were writing those movies to keep them apart. You know, like they were. They were trying to create drama. Right. And it was stupid. Like And they didn't yeah. have a lot of chemistry. Like Ian Grafod and uh, uh uh Jessica Alba. It just didn't I didn't see either of them. How do you as, as not characters. have chemistry well, with they, Jessica Alba? That's all I wanted up. They they only had Jessica Alba on not character. for chemistry, That's but what? just to have her take her 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 clothes off. That was that was literally. I mean, the joke was that she kept you know reappearing after she took her clothes off. That was the only reason they had her on there. Well, she's good looking. That's why they had her on there. I mean, yeah. she's not she's not a um, known for her acting chops. Oh, she's pretty good in Sin City. Um, I don't I know. like her. She's she's pretty. I'm not gonna say she, she's not pretty. Well, she's she's but, got some acting chops. She just that wasn't what they brought she, her on there for. No, but I mean, like she's okay. Like, what is she doing now? Well, uh, yeah, my well, no, is, she. I I read an article not that long ago. She walked away from acting because she wanted to raise her family. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's what they all say. Um, hey, <laughs> sure. Nice. I mean, no, right. absolutely. She's not that good. Like, she's pretty. She got like. Like there's lots of there's lots of very pretty actresses that are talented. They're super talented that work all the time. Like no one her. Like she's she's not very good in those movies. And like a lot of it too is the two actors don't have a lot of chemistry. Like those movies aren't very yeah. good. Like honestly, Chris Evans and Michael Chiklis were cast well, but they aren't given yes. enough to do. Like the real thing is what are you gonna do with the thing? Like that's the thing is the heart of the Fantastic Four. Like yeah. let's see if they stick the landing on that. There's a lot. This movie has a lot. And the less they tie into the 616 MCU or whatever we're calling the MCU, like the better off they're going to be. They need to establish something. They, they, is they it 616? Have, yeah, they have said it's 616 now. Which so like, drives me nuts. It's weird. But whatever. Like they need to they need to make sure they 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 focus on their movie before they traverse space time. Well, if you do thing right, you can do a solo thing movie too as well, I think. I don't know. See, I know I hear what you're saying. There's a lot of solo thing comics. I think those fan. I've always been in mind the Fantastic Four characters are just better when they're with each other. Okay. Like the relationship of the Fantastic Four is what makes it work. Hmm. I like some Pretty of the cool. solo thing books though. So maybe that's just my personal preference. You like Thing One or Thing Two? Oh, <laughs> um, and I had mentioned uh, Secret Invasion, not Secret Invasion, Secret War. Sorry, oh, Secret so Invasion was horrible. Um. And I don't know if you guys had heard, there had been rumors going around for a while that Sam Raimi had been tapped to direct Secret Invasion. Uh... Sorry, Secret War. Why do I keep saying Secret Invasion? Too much rum. Um, he was rough. recently asked in uh, an interview with, um, I think it was uh, Screen Geek? Yeah, ScreenGeek.com. Uh, like, is there, is there any truth to the rumors or whatever? And he basically came out and said, no one has approached him, but he would love to direct that movie. He'd love to do another Marvel movie. I don't know and that he's the right So guy. here's the thing. I knew one of you was going to react that way, right? Because we've said this before. When you watch a Sam Raimi movie, you know you're watching a Sam Raimi movie to a point. But my argument is the Spider-Man movies he did don't feel like 
uh, bullshit. Know, Maybe the scene with Doc Ock in the second movie with no. at the hospital. Those the movies one hundred percent feel like Sam Raimi movies. Yeah, I will argue that forever. I saw oh, a yeah. clip today. It's the sequence in um, Spider-Man Two. Spidey's swinging through the city, and then all of a sudden, uh, there's a the, the the it zooms out and it's uh, Doc Ock's sunglasses. Yeah, but and that's it's such zoom, a great zoom out is Raimi. Yeah, the, Sam Raimi was the master of the zoom out. Like. Right, and like and that's such a great shot. It really is. And then he starts, uh, Ox starts climbing up the building. It's a really great shot. Like, I love. I, I think he can do. He can handle it. No, oh, he, of course, no, he can I, handle it. it I mean, you can handle, it, but he's. I don't. I don't feel like it's the right. I. I. I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't feel know. Like I didn't, he's the right person for this one. I don't know if I. I don't know how I feel about it because they didn't. Multiverse had a lot of. Horror element, elements. It oh, did for sure a lot of horror, but Sam doesn't just do horror movies. Like he's done a lot of stuff in his career that's that's that different. Like the best horror movies are made by real directors, not horror directors, right? Like the, yeah. the good horror movies are made by just guys who are good filmmakers. And Sam Raimi's made good movies. Like for the love of the game is a pretty good like sports romance movie. Like Simple Plans, a good thriller movie. Like The Gift is a good thriller movie. Like he's just a good director. And Dark Man's got horror elements to it, but it's more of a thriller than it is. It's like a supernatural thriller more than a horror movie. So I mean Sam Raimi can like he gets a lot. He, he loves horror. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But there's a lot to him that's just not horror. Stuff. Yeah, I, and think like, a, I think he's a great director, personally. That being said, I don't know if he's. I don't think he stuck the landing with Multiverse of Madness. Mm. Uh, James Burton says, "I love Sam raising Sam Raimi movies. I love an FF Raimi movie more than a horror or Doom better." Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I can get on board with that. Um, I would rather see Sam Raimi making Sam Raimi movies. I've seen Sam Raimi making superhero movies, and I just want to see somebody else, especially with that particular story doing it. I feel like, not necessarily, but part of the problem with Multiverse of Madness was interference from the studio. Oh, I agree. I agree. And Sam Raimi's not at his best. Like, look at Spider-Man 3. Yeah. When people are sticking their nose into Sam Raimi's business, I don't think you get his best work. Right. That's why Spider-Man 2 is the best fan, uh, the best of those. Because he had proven himself on Spider-Man 1, they let him make Spider-Man 2, and he knocked it out of the park. And then Spider-Man 3 came around, and all of a sudden, Navy Rod's like, we, we need the Venom. Give me Venom. I want Venom. Like, And then it just, yeah, it doesn't work. And that's and why that's, I kind of want Yeah, him. I mean, the problem was he was a fan of the, the Stan Lee he era of Spider-Man Sandman. comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, like, I don't know. I, I like. I'd rather see somebody else do that movie. I don't know what that movie is yet, so I don't have any opinions really on who should do it. I just don't want Sam Raimi doing another Marvel movie personally because I don't think it's. I don't think we get the best Sam Raimi when he's doing those. And I don't. I don't. I just don't feel like he'd be the right tone for it. Depends what tone I, they want. Depends what they're looking for. Yeah. True, but because if if let's say they do the version from the comics, and it's Doom that brings them together for the fight in the secret wars like and you want doom to be menacing and dark i think sam raimi's perfect for that yeah Could but be. it's not just the dark and and you know like horror stuff it's it's i don't know that the, i don't think the tone of it is just horror right i or, don't know i'm gonna i i still argue that spider-man 2 is the best uh super it's one of them movie. I, no argument for me i love yeah, spider-man yeah. 2 i just don't want I just don't want Kevin Feige telling Sam Raimi how to make a movie. Right, anymore. right. That's that's why I'm kind of like, you know what? I'm not. I don't okay. want that again. And I, right? and I yeah. totally agree with that that side of the argument. Yes, definitely. But I would not turn it down. Like well, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't poo poo it if if no. they offered it to him. Leave him the fuck. You would rather see do that. I think I could do a better job. I think Kugler would be the guy to to stick that landing. And they seem to let Kugler do what he wants to do. So I'm hoping if they do that, they would let they would let it be Ryan Kugler. Do they? I don't know. Black Panther one was freaking awesome, and Black yeah, Panther but I two feel like, was the I movie feel... he wanted to make. The problem is, we didn't get the Black Panther movie that he wanted to make because you know, Chad's dead. You I know? feel. I feel like. Yeah. I honestly, you can say I'm crazy. You're I feel crazy. Like 
Riri Williams was thrown in there. That was a Marvel it was. studio decision. No, it, it was it absolutely. And she doesn't was. work in the movie. She there's no need for her. I don't argue True. that. I don't. But that's like, and this is, and we we just went over why the last couple of years of Marvel movies didn't work because of studio interference. That being said, I think that he did the best job working in that era. Like it's the, like at, Wakanda Forever is probably the best film of this era of Marvel movies, right? Pure, like just from a pure filmmaking standpoint. Right. It's great to look at. There's a competent plot. It's fun. Like, it's a good movie. It just, it, it's a Black Panther without the Black Panther because they couldn't do the right. Black Panther movie. Right. right. It's like, right. it's a great example of, of like something that shouldn't have worked at all, kind of working as good as it could be. And there's no other movie of that era that's as good, that's as well made. Like, there's some studio interference in that one, but it doesn't feel like as much studio interference as the rest of them had. Yeah. No, I agree. It probably doesn't, but I do think. I don't Riri, argue. No, no, I agree. Riri Williams stuff was was all Marvel. Like we want to bring this character in, <clears throat> and this the, the movie to bring her in. It was like really. Yeah, but I could see Coogler going, okay, I can make this work, and like yeah. you know, trying to make it work. And he did his, he did his best at making it work, and they it worked. But it's not, it's not like people are going crazy for Riri Williams. Like, Mar, like there's yeah. a, there's a reason why things are going on at Disney right now with what's going on. Oh, oh I, I mean know. the the. The uh, was it the vote? The board, the the board stuff with Iger. Iger's got some, he's got some points. Like, and I'm not, I don't want to go like it's this anti woke culture. And I'm like, I think that's all stupid because I don't think anybody knows what that word means. But I do think that Marvel's been off the ball, and I do think they were trying to force too many new characters rather than trying to figure out what works with their characters right now. Right? Yeah, I do but think it's it, a big problem. But it, it's better that Iger, like Iger won, right? Because they Iger's pots. better. Like Iger's better at letting people make movies. Like the problem was, is that like the guy wrote, like uh, Shapek was like, like we're, we need all this stuff put in there, and yeah. Feige's like, we need to do this, and like it was Shapek was the one studio. that Shapek yeah. was the one that pushed for all this stuff on Disney Plus too, correct? Which, which really yeah. hurt Marvel. Every, yeah, right. Like Iger's pretty good at letting filmmakers be filmmakers, right? And, and, and just and pu- yeah. And he just like he I mean Iger just want to, wants Marvel and Disney to make good movies and not necessarily worry about, you know, messaging. Which I think that when you're wor- when you, when everyone's talking about the message, you've lost the purpose of the message. Right. Cuz the idea of that kind of stuff should be like you shouldn't eat, like Black Panther, right? That's a great movie. But you don't say that's a great black movie. Like you know, you don't, you don't, you, sh- you don't do that. And that should be the point, right? That should always be the point. And Just it's, make and a it's, great hate, movie, period. And I hate being a white guy saying these things because it's like, okay, you can say that from a position of privilege. You're a hundred percent. I mean, the problem is they you can even, you can even do it the other way. You can even do it the other way too. You can say Wonder Woman. Uh, the first Wonder Woman is a great movie. It's a great chick right? movie. Yeah, but it's a great movie. I agree right, with you. That's, that's what I'm saying. You don't say right, it's a no. great chick movie. You say it's a no. great movie. But and then here's the problem is that we're three white, three middle-aged white guys saying this stuff. And so we look like we come from a position of power saying they shouldn't be doing something. And I'm not saying that. I'm we saying are that, middle-aged well, white men, so well, we I know. do have power. No, like you, I, we, I don't push have the button, any the button, the button, <laughs> the button, push the button. Um, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't okay, wanna, okay, wait, 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 wait. I'll make you happy. <clears throat> what are you doing? Uh, we we don't do that here. Yes, in, there we go. in in the end, <laughs> it's good that Nelson Peltz didn't win because if he had been in charge, he had said some things about the, the uh, Black Panther movies wouldn't have been made at all. 100%. No woman would have ever been in any kind of perimeter. Hundred percent. So. That guy is worse. But they're focusing but, on what on what Iger's saying, like. Iger's concern is let's make good movies, right? That's this other guy is like anti woke, anti woke, anti woke, yeah. but they're 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 beating on these specific sound bites that Iger had, and like I understand, like you have to, like I want to see diverse characters, I want to see a, a good range of storytelling. The problem is, is Marvel's throwing out all these C and D list characters and expecting them all to land right. at once, and none of them so, did. Yeah, That's um, the I think on this. Uh, if no one watched it yet, uh, if you're this out when you're done, go watch the rant that I posted on Friday, um, which was all about like our our Marvel movies failing because if you look at the box office from last year, well, it was all comic book movies in general. But no, the only Marvel movie that did bad last year was the Marvels, and we talked in uh, we actually kind of liked that one, but yeah. but the whole but that failed for a lot of different reasons. It was had nothing to do with um 
really wokeness or any of this other garbage. It there's a lot of reasons why that movie failed. And like, but all the other Marvel movies that came out last year, uh, across the Spider Verse, uh, Ant Man, Quantum Mania, and um, what was the other one that that came out the the, 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 the um. Thor, oh, Guardians Thor. of the Galaxy three. They were Galaxy. all blockbusters. They all made they all Guardians made great. their money back and more. They all did really well. So to sit there, this one movie fails, and everyone's like, "Marvel's done. Marvel's dead." It's like, really? Based on one movie? Like, what are you talking about? That, I, I think lower. people just like yeah. to see people like to see things fail. Yeah, you no, know, and so they and, can be right. And, ah, look, it's failing. It's failing. Because yeah, even Aquaman. Right. Even Aquaman, after all the other DC movies failed, uh, the Aquaman movie made a lot of money last year at the end of the year. People like Mama. Yeah. Like, I, I, here's the thing. People want these things to fail because they've been successful. Nobody likes a guy who keeps winning, right? Everybody wants to see the king get knocked down. Not yeah. everybody. But a, lot of people. Exactly. a lot of people do. And, and they, they, did, they, they underperformed. Like, and there weren't a lot of great movies. Like, we, were, we were used to like Marvel doing like hitting home runs. They didn't hit a lot of home runs last year. Ant-Man and Wasp sucked. That's a bad movie, right? Guardians made money. That's all that matters to them. Yeah, but at the same time, we talked about this on the show. That made money, and then like it starts a dwindling effect. Like, and a lot of it too. I think a big problem was JPEG's idea of like all this Disney Plus content. I Mm. think like I talked about it relentlessly on the show last year. How burnt out I was because there was just too much content. We're in April of 2024, and we haven't had Marvel content with the exception of X Men '97. Like they right. pulled back this year, and it's been refreshing. Last the last two or three years, we've been inundated with Marvel content, and it was just it wasn't like the movies are failing. But again, like I said, not enough headline characters, and there's there's a reason why Spider Man is the top selling character for Marvel I, comics because he works, right? You just can't throw, and Marvel keeps trying this. You keep throwing all these characters with Spider Man in there, and unless it's Peter Parker or now Miles. As Spider Man, it doesn't land for a reason. Stars sell comics, I, and I, star characters sell movies. I have a feeling that this Deadpool Wolverine movie gonna is going. Me. It's 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 going to be like the first Marvel movie that makes a billion dollars. It very well could. I mean, like yeah. look at look at. It's going to be like Godzilla Kong. Like I think the the I, that's a great like litmus test for what I think that movie could be a team up movie. Right, that's a lot of fun. Like I, I jokingly told my wife, I said they lifted the they lifted the the script from Lethal Weapon to make the Godzilla movie because there's various points that, that Kong looks at the camera like Danny Glover and it's like I'm too old for this shit, you know. <laughs> Wait, it, it, Dan, oh my god, it's true. <laughs> you said you said the first Marvel movie that makes a billion dollars. I said I think we've had Marvel movies made a billion. Yeah, dollars. we've had uh, several, like lots of them. <laughs> I know, like I'm pretty sure Endgame made a billion dollars. A- Endgame um, did, Infinity War did um black panther did like all right um, it'll be the first one in a long time in a while in yeah. a while a return to form let's say there you yeah. go there return you. to massive profitability yeah i mean like, make a billion dollars opening weekend but again, How those, that? but again those are stars like wolverine deadpool right? yeah ryan those reynolds are, Hugh jackman and ryan reynolds Hugh jackman stars like we haven't yeah. had enough stars in marvel movies lately yeah they have i mean <laughs> Yeah, and I and there is this weird thing to push Captain Marvel, who like yeah she's a she's an important character in a lot of stories in the comics, but she's still never been like a breakout like oh everyone loves this character. People do like her. She has her she has a very loyal, dedicated fan base, and I get why Marvel wants her. They want a Wonder Woman. Marvel's never had a Wonder Woman. But I feel I don't know. I feel Miss Marvel has a uh, Kamala Khan has a bigger following than captain marvel i don't know if i agree with that uh from the from the comics definitely not from the movies i don't know maybe you got, i don't know i feel like if that was true the movie would have done better because i got feel more. like i think i think uh the marvels would have been better done better if miss marvel was a movie and not a tv show i agree with that i yeah. agree with that because captain marvel made a lot of money yeah Right, and I guess Marvel wants they want their Wonder Woman, and they've never quite had one. Captain Marvel's the closest I, thing they've had to having a Wonder Woman. But and I again, think Kamala Khan is their Wonder Woman, and they're screwing it up potentially. But the the results don't show that, Dave. I know. Like, and I love she's great as Kamala Khan. I like the show. Yeah, 
Like she's a she's a, a treasure in the Marvels. I liked the Marvels, all flaws and all. Like you know, it's got warts, but it was those were like they were cute warts. Like I, mm. I was entertained by it. And Brie Larson got to show some personality finally in that movie. She didn't get to show any personality in the first one. Like this problem. Like Captain Marvel is a flawed ass movie. It's not a bad movie, but it's a. I think the Marvels is a better movie than Captain Marvel. Uh, Drew says Captain Marvel's going to get absorbed by Rogue. Probably not. I do not hold your breath on that happening in the MCU. People would be not happy with, with that whole thing. Well, I think they. I, I think it would be fine, but it doesn't mean she. That's how Rogue gets her. You know, power. It, it, light and what, super strength what happened light. to Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel when that happened? She got shelled until Chris Claremont made her binary. And for the first few months, she got no powers anyway. So, I mean, like, I don't think they're going to do that. No, they'll do it, but it'll be like a temporary effect on her. And then she'll get Or she absorbs back. like half the power, something like that. It'll be exactly. Like yeah. Like, so, but I don't think because she's already, she absorbed, before. she absorbed Wolverine's powers in the X-Men movies and, and he didn't lose his powers. They're going to do the same thing. It's probably not even going to be the same version of Rogue. We don't even know what's going to happen with this Mar- with yeah. this Deadpool movie. So, I mean, yeah. like, I just think... I, I just want to make good movies again. Right? Like, fun movies that we can just go have fun with. Like, I don't know. We need stars. They just need... They just need like, give me fucking Spider-Man again. Those Spider-Man movies are great. Like, give me your A-team. I don't want to watch the B-players anymore. Hell, give us the A-team. That'll work. <laughs> that A-team movie Plus, wasn't great. But, but the I know, whole thing I know. is... That, that could have been the whole thing is we have been. Marvel's actual A team waiting in the wings the Fantastic Four, the X Men, and Spider Man. Fantastic I mean, Four has not Spider-Man. been Marvel's A team since 1968. Are you sure? Have, yeah. 100%. They've had a couple good stories here and yeah, there. Yeah, but they're not the A team. Like, All right. The X Men are the A team. I'll give you that. They're still better than, I don't know, um, Riri Williams. No one cares about her. I'm sorry. I mean, like, I hate, I hate that you're that you're harping on it because I feel like you're always harping on the young female characters you don't like. Like it always feels like that. Like, but again, I can't argue that they haven't read that she go, Spider Ghost has a following. I cannot argue that she did not land. Like it hmm. did not work. I can't argue that. Well, that's another thing too. I think they would. I mean, I won't disagree if they made a live action Spider Ghost. It would sell. It would. It would do great. But. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not going to get that. Not anytime soon. Not till after the Miles movies are done. Uh, Kassan says, I really don't think a lack of char- a lack of A characters is the problem. I disagree. It's the lack of A stories. Everyone claims Iron Man wasn't an A character, but the story was awesome. The story was awesome. Robert Downey Jr. was an A-list actor, though. Yes, he made him an A character. Right. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr.'s presence elevated Iron Man and Marvel. Like, was he on the comeback? Yes, he was on the comeback, but he yeah. was on the comeback. Like, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang comes out three years before Iron Man, and beforehand, the man was an Oscar winner who had a lot of box office hits under his belt. Like, as a young man, like in his 20s, Robert Downey Jr. was a star star. So, I mean, yeah. like, and it was like when they got, remember, everybody, came, remember when they cast Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man? Everybody went, oh, that's going to work. Because of the story yeah. of Iron Man. And they didn't actually do the alcoholism thing, which is weird. But, I mean, like, it was there. And it made sense to everybody. And the trailer looked great. And just, like, Iron Man was lightning in a bottle. Like, it really yeah. was. Thor Thor hasn't been an A-list character for a long time. In the sells, comics. No, no. The Avengers, the big three Avengers, is Iron Man, Cap, and Thor. Those guys sell. When those guys are on the Avengers, it sells more. And it's always historically sold more. Right. But a solo, they're, like, eh, they're hit and miss. It's hit and miss, yeah, but together, like the team together yeah. always yes. works. Yeah, agreed. All right, um, let's do one more story and then get into the main topic. And um, this, hey, we are. We are. The, uh, <laughs> did you guys, because it's oh, like, Star Wars stuff, I love talking Star Wars. Did you guys watch the trailer for, um, what's it called, Tales of the Empire? No, there's a trailer? Oh my yes. God, yeah. Oh, I missed It's it. an animated series. Uh, oh, in the vein of um, of the Clone Wars type animation and oh. uh, Bad Batch, um, you didn't watch it? No. It's, so okay, so it's... the premise it takes place um, right after Revenge of the Sith. It's that time frame in the Empire when they're putting the Inquisitors together to go hunt down the Jedi. So, so sorry. 
Because that's so. If an A-list actor takes a C-list character, you think the movie will do well, even with a flat story like I'm putting out. I, I give you Iron Man. <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> Iron Man. Are you going to keep saying I, that? I think Iron I think Man. You got, I think you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man. Did yeah, you? no. I mean, you know, like there's always that weird argument about putting Tom Cruise in Iron Man. I don't even know if it would have done as well. Like Tom well, Cruise no. is an ass and seats actor, and I get that, but sometimes, not always. Nobody saw the Mummy with Tom Cruise. Well, yeah, all right, I'll give you that. But at the but the Mummy is way after Iron Man. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Tom Cruise is an A-list. He's an A-list actor. If the story sucks, people will go to see it. Here's what happens: people will go see it. It'll have a great opening, and then it'll fall off a cliff. But I thought you think if you want to keep people coming back, you got to have a good story. That's mm-hmm. what made it work. Here's the thing, right? There's all these stories about them more or less ad libbing Iron Man, like they were rewriting the script as they were doing it. They were like developing it as they went along. That, that's a um, lot. Of they do that. I, I, no, no, I get that, but like. There are also a lot of things that you can tell come from Robert Downey Jr. that make that movie work, that make the character work. So I don't acting, think that would have come from uh, um, what's his face, uh, Tom Cruise. No, I agree with that. It's you get a different movie. Acting is all about choices, right? You get a script. A script isn't the Bible. People have to understand when screenwriting right. happens. And this is writers too. Like when you write your script, the script exists as a, as a whole unto itself. When it gets in the hands of a director, it's going to get interpreted. When it gets in the hands of actors, they're going to interpret things and do and put their spin on things. Exit acting is about choices. What we see specifically in Iron Man is a lot of Robert Downey Jr.'s choices, right? And they yeah. come through. Like anytime you cast Robin Williams in a movie, you got Robin Williams doing Robin Williams stuff, right. making up half the stuff and people have to play off of. But actors and directors like those kind of things. They like ad living. So, I mean, like you get a performance out of him. Absolutely, Tom Cruise's Tony Stark would have been a way different character. I don't think you get. I don't think you get the self confidence issues that that plague Robert Downey Jr.'s right. character. Because right. Robert that... Downey Jr.'s character is a lot, and more so than the Tony Stark in the comics, you get like this imposter syndrome that he possesses because Robert Downey Jr. possesses that. Right? right? So those are that's what he put into the character. Right. And that's why you that's what you that's what A-list actors bring to something, but it's a different that's a different vibe and a different flavor when you get a different character. Like a right. miscasting can ruin a movie, absolutely. And I'm th- I'm just making the argument that the wrong A-list actor. I agree might, with you. Yeah, might not 100%, make it. Hundred percent. Like I said, there's lightning in a bottle. It just worked. Like again, they didn't have a script. People say, "Oh man, the script was a disaster." That happens in a lot of movies, and sometimes it works because the right combination. Because filmmaking is a collaborative process. It's not like writing a book, right? When you write a book, it's just the dude. It's just the writer and and the editor helping out. Like when you're making a movie, like it's a team effort. And the yeah. team on Iron Man freaking delivered. We can never take that away. Or like the same year, The Dark Knight. Like he, we've seen so many interpretations of the Joker, the same character. And yeah. for my money, Heath Ledger's is still the best because of his choices and what he chose to do with the framework that Christopher Nolan provided him and the backbone of what the comic books did. You know what I'm saying? Like it's all about choices and Heath Ledger, though he wasn't a list, he was knocking on that door and would have been had he lived. And just remember like, you know, you can have um, a good script too, and it can go the other way with hundred percent. You're right. It's that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good yes. scripts destroyed because of bad casting, because of bad directors, because you know, it just, it, because the bad teamwork, right? Or, or because the studio came in studio. Yeah, <laughs> you're smell. right, John. I smell Segway. So smell egg whites? What did you say? Segway. Oh, Segway. <laughs> so I think that's a good segue to take a commercial break and come back with our main topic. This is so wizard angry. Broadcasting very fast and very dangerous from the planet Malastair. You are listening to So Wizards. You're thinking, you said people gonna die? 
the only podcast to make the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs. So be no one to stop us this time. I am your host, Joey DiCarlo, and with me, my co-hosts, the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield, and the expert, Mr. Mark Hay, Mark Ellis Ray. You are listening to So Wizard Podcast, where three friends review movies, TV, and sometimes more, podcasting weekly on the Geek World All-Stars Podcast Network. For Kellis Reagans, please tell the listeners where they can find more So Wizard Podcast. <laughs> Everybody, you can head on over to SoWizardPodcast.com, and there you're going to find a brand new episode every week. Find So Wizard on all podcasting streaming platforms, such as iTunes, Spotify, Good Pods, and pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Check out our YouTube page, where new content is being uploaded regularly. We also have a Patreon page. For as little as a dollar a month, you can receive exclusive bonus content while you're supporting the show. No, I didn't! First of all, a podcast takes a lot of work, okay? You have to organize the guests, you have to do a Google Calendar, and then you build a following. It takes a long time, and I've been working on it for a while. All right. <laughs> it doesn't do much if you don't do anything. You just show up every week. Yeah, that is true. Um, wow. Um, all right. So I had this idea. We are always talking about reboots and uh, relaunches, sequels, unboots, deboots, whatever the you know, whatever the popular thing is at the moment. And um, but they're always taking movies that were successes and redoing them, right? Like that's the whole thing. Is very rarely do they say, "Hey, this movie failed. Where did it go wrong? Let's try remaking it." Right? They're just like, "Oh, it was a terrible idea." So I said, "Why don't we each take a movie that was a box office failure and look at where it went wrong and how could it be, how could it be remade to be a better movie?" So we all picked a movie. Um, I picked the Lone Ranger. John, you picked, which I think is a dangerous choice, uh, the Last Dragon, and JD, you picked uh, Highlander, which you I think what? is a good. I, I think Highlander is a great choice because they are currently remaking it with uh, yeah. Henry Cavill. And and we should do a group pro. We should have we should have come up with doing a group project for like the Dark Universe or something. <laughs> the Dark Universe cannot work. No. Just I was kidding. thinking about that today. J- no, sorry, sorry. I just want to hear JD's reason for this. Those movies are not designed to be a, se- a series. They're designed to just be. They're designed to just be horror things. And like yeah. they're all about villains. Like The problem with the Dark Universe is wh- who am I cheering for? Yeah. Who right. am I cheering for? Like, they need a protagonist. I need a guy Isn't that to overcome something. Like, it could be Van Helsing, but it didn't work because, like, it doesn't work. These characters that... work on their own as forces of nature. Isn't that mm-hmm. part of the problem with the Joker movie? Like, 100% part of the Joker movie. You're supposed movie. to root for the Joker. That's. There's a story currently that I wish somebody would tell in comics about the actual Joker being, like, this triumphant hero and nobody understanding and him using it to kill a lot of people. Him using this newfound, like, oh, the Joker is the best that, like, the Joker could actually use to just hurt a bunch of people because people have lost. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled wasn't convincing the world he didn't exist. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making people think he wasn't a threat. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like there's a lot of people that don't feel like the Joker is a threat anymore. Uh, and I think we need that again. I'll, I'll tell you in the Dark Universe who you root for, Abbott and Costello. Because yeah, but it's not. But they did a whole bunch of movies back uh, way back in the day, um, and and that worked. But that was you know, it, yeah. But you're right. Like there, there's no. They would need to tie it to like a few people it doesn't throughout work. the whole thing. And it's and who's more interesting so, than Dragon Frankenstein and the Wolfman? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. It doesn't work. So well, if you did an anti-hero, thing. one of them being an anti-hero, I guess. I, I guess you could do like, and they but tried Marvel that with has. Frankenstein. Like you tried that with Frankenstein, or like the werewolf, the Wolfman could be it, or maybe if like you decided to use Count Orlock as like the hero fighting against all these things. Me, I mean, like I just don't think it works. I don't think it works. Hmm. Which is why it hasn't worked. Yes, um. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, Drew brings up an interesting question: Wasn't Highlander a success? Side note, I saw Highlander with my mom 
when I was 12 at home. So Highlander is an interesting uh, study in film because it's one of those movies where, no, it failed at the box office, but then got a cult following on home video. Because you saw it enough. Because you saw it at home with your mom when you were 12, and I saw it at home on HBO when I was nine. Right. Mm. And I because of the cult following, they ha- they greenlit a sequel, which was and, horrible. And, <laughs> oh, quickening. oh, God. It wasn't got, even the same. It might have not, it might as well not have been the same a continuation of any story. Like, it, it doesn't was, make. And well, um, then they made the TV show and the cartoon show, but that's another, all because it's a success of home video. It's not a success of the and, box office. Right. Another great example of that is the series Blade was good. Yeah, Blade Runner failed. Blade Runner failed at the box office, gained a huge following in home video, and that's why they've released ten different versions of that movie since then. And that's Ridley why it got a sequel. Ridley Scott's got a lot of those. Like he, he's either like, like Ridley Scott's like a home run hitter. Like he either knocks it out of the park or just like completely strikes out. It's happened quite a few times in his career. Mm. Like for every Alien, like there's also like Blade Runner. That was a f- freaking failure legend a freaking failure of a failure oh like, legend was hard like wow I got, a, I got a soft spot for it you know because i saw right. it at 12 at home on hbo there like, you go yeah all yeah, right but it it yeah, wants the to, reviews were horrible who wants to go I, first i'll go first okay so highlander the bones of highlander work the problem we talked about casting earlier the problem with highlander is the casting right You've got a Frenchman, like a straight-up Frenchman with an accent, playing a Scottish Highlander. Uh, 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 What, 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 what? what? Wait, are you talking about... Christopher Lambert. Oh, okay, yes. A Frenchman playing the Highlander. But you've also got a Scotsman playing a Spaniard who's actually an Egyptian. Egyptian, (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I thought that's who you meant at first, and I'm like, oh, no, that's right. Yeah, Yeah. okay, yeah, he's an Egyptian, but he's actually Scottish. But go ahead. But that's what I'm saying. It's like the, the the movie is confused, and because it's kind of corny, it has like a cult following. But the bone, like, so what I would do, like, <clears throat> here's my concept for like the Highlander. I think you keep everything <clears throat> the same. The contest for these immortals who are battling to determine who could be the final one, right? And mm-hmm. you have you have it the same where uh, Duncan McLeod is the Highlander, like is is the is this immortal who's been traveling around the world to try to you know for this battle to find the one to get you know, the quickening, right? I think you could keep the Kurgan the same way, but I think you need a better, like, I think you need a stronger villain. I think you need the Kurgan to be working with someone. I think I need a guy at the top of Lex Luthor, if you will, who's trying to manipulate these Highland, like a Highlander who doesn't actually want to fight. Right. Okay. Islander who's trying to manipulate the power, like he's trying to upload, like load up the Kurgan so that he can take out the Kurgan eventually, right? And now he's come into the Ramirez and McLeod, like or not even Ramirez, he's taken out Ramirez. Now he's there after Duncan McLeod, the Highlander. Wait, right? you're talking now, mythos? You're basically you're basically talking. I don't know about what the fuck mythos. mythos is. What are you Me- talking mythos about? from the from the series? Mythos was oh, one I never of the watched four the horsemen and oh, okay. yeah. Like I know, yeah, but, I watched. I, I liked the intro. I loved the the title sequence to the Highlander TV show, but I never got beyond that to watch the actual <laughs> show. But <laughs> Mythos was doesn't want to fight, but was like over two thousand years old, and and you know was a mastermind well, no. for a while. Yeah, I want him, and that's and that's okay. No, I don't want that. I want like a corporate overlord who is manipulating the Kurgan so that he can think. And you can even have him operating from the shadows. That's what I want. And I want Duncan McLeod kind of on the run. I want a series of Highlanders, like a Highlander horseman, like after him. Like I want these, a collection of these immortals, like like, like levels below, like out to get like, and I want Duncan McLeod on the run and him having memories of his days with Ramirez trying to like battle up, or you can even have Ramirez acting as like, you can have him meet Ramirez or a similar character to Ramirez today. Who's got to help train him to get to the next level so that he's ready to fight the Kurgan and ready to fight the Kurgan. Right? Almost like a, almost like a, in spawn, like a, I can't remember the name of Chris Christopherson's character in spawn, the guy who trains spawn, you know? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, Whistler. I'm thinking of Whistler from Blade. But there's, like, the character... There's always a Whistler, yeah. Yeah, like a Whistler. Like a guy like a guy who can help him get... Kenobi, if you will. Who can help him get... Like, he's had all this talent. He's survived for years on his wits. But now, he is the target of the Kurgan. Now, he's the target of the or super villain. So now, he has to, like, Goku himself and level up. See, like that, John? And for to meet his final battle. And then it turns out, like, 
Oh, you know what it is? Okay, I got it. I just came up with this. The guy who's training him to help level him up is actually really the villain. Right? Okay. Like he's trying to level him up so that his more powerful so that when he takes the power, he's ready. And then eventually Duncan McCloud is is the Highlander. So he's reverse the, flash. Uh, yeah, kinda. Yeah. You about Thorn. Reverse uh, you about Thorn. Except like he's training him. Yeah, it's very similar. Yep. So I'm I'm digging on my story right now. I haven't had a lot of time to actually like beat this thing out. This is just my raw ideas in my head of what I would like. Um Kassan says, I haven't watched Highlander in decades. Would you reboot the series with a hero Highlander or an anti hero? I mean the guy is Going around killing people, um, and then he all, asks, all the "What's best. the what's the point of the quickening again?" I haven't watched it in years. I, it's just a, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Trope? It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a trope. It's a, a MacGuffin, if you will. Oh like yeah. so, they never really explained it. Really, so no, here's they the never thing. really do. So it could be whatever we decide it is. Here's the thing, and that's that's the problem with this is that Highlander was written to be like a standalone movie, and. They made a sequel where they tried to explain their With powers. Aliens. Right, and say they were aliens. And I think that's what Kassan is saying. Like, aliens. well, he's going around killing people, but you have to give him a reason for killing these other immortals. Like, why are they after this prize? Right. So that's what you can do with this is like the like our villain, we'll call him Ramirez just for like the purposes. I don't know what else to call him. Like Ramirez is trying to get the so let's say the quickening is just a source of all power. There can be only one because the one gets the prize. Whatever the prize is, the ultimate power, you know, perhaps he can you know he can transcend and become God. Uh, who knows? Like it doesn't really matter. He just wants all this power, right? So he's collecting the heads of all of our other immortals, mm -hmm. right? And now he's got his immortal, his basic, his number one assassin, and then he's also created well, levels below. But in order, like the kill has to be pure, like he has to be powerful. The, so the original has, prize was mortality. Like yeah, they were no it, longer immortal. But also yeah. like all like a level of omniscience too. Yeah, it is like it's like nirvana. It's essentially nirvana. It's essentially the Buddhist concept of nirvana, which yeah. I'm not terribly comfortable doing. But I guess you could do that. Is you have a chance to. So let's say, okay, let's say that's the quest, and that's what Duncan wants again. And I believe that's from the original movie too. Is he wants to see his wife, right? He wants right. to go to heaven essentially. So that's what he's looking for. And then at the end, he learns that it's not his time. Like he has a purpose. Right. Okay. That's what I. That's again. This is just me spitballing. I think we we came up with this kind of in a couple in the last couple of days because John and I yeah. were avoiding the email. So yes, saw <laughs> <laughs> this. I guess how the stew is made. So I mean, like this is this is a story I would do. I would have like a um, I would have a Joseph Campbell hero's journey story where the mentor character is also the secret villain. Cool. I like and that. then Duncan, and then Duncan wins in the end, and now he has to find out what his now that he is the immortal, what is his purpose in life, and is he really the only one? I I, I dig it. I, I I would watch that. Thanks, man. Let's see what they do with uh, Henry Cavill's version. Um, Hope it's good. Yeah. Um. All right. Do you want to go next, or do you want me to go next, John? I can go next. All right. This will be interesting. Uh, a middle-aged white man taking on a. a <laughs> a black cult classic. All right. <laughs> a great movie too. I love the, the last dragon. It is a great movie, but it, yeah, I mean, it, technically it is a failure as well. Ogun of Harlem. Yeah, but it's got all, it, it's got all the ingredients that today would make a really great movie. I mean, catches, catches bullets it, with his teeth. What's that? That's the line catches bullets with his teeth. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, the glow, the whole idea of the glow, it's its almost like the idea of the force. I mean, you know, and you've got all this anime that's been out now since, I mean, What's hell, that? where did they get the another yellow glowing guy who powers up? Huh? I wonder where that came from, Goku, right? So, but it would, it, you could do it so much better with the technology we have today with CGI and all that. Um, and if they added levels to it, like, you know, they had already introduced the fact that Show enough only had the glow around his hands. Shogun of and, Harlem. Hmm? Every time you say show enough, you have to say Shogun of Harlem. That's yeah. the rule. <laughs> yes, the Shogun of Harlem. Yes. Um, we met him once, too. Uh, and uh, No, we didn't. We met yeah, we, the... Was it, oh. Wasn't it... It was the guy who played show enough that we, we met. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Sorry. Yeah. You know, three... What is it? Uh, fingers respect, like... Fingerless? Respect, respect for the dead. Yes. Um... And uh, 
you know, if if you if you did it in levels, then you've got like enough for a whole series while he works his way up to like having the glow around his their body or, you know, or deep in the mythology. But um you know, it's just the idea of this this country bumpkin who just happens to be a uh martial artist genius and this idea of 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 be, being able to ascend to a, a level where you know your key is so strong it starts to glow from your body yeah you know, i mean it's all sorts of of shonen um anime um but that's actually uh, that's a good idea actually incorporating though because i think a lot of that stuff is influenced from last dragon so i think if you were to reincorporate some of those elements into a remake you could actually have something like something that's a little bit that winks and nods to dragon ball and all those things like you yeah could actually, it, it, it's you funny because toriyama came up with it around the same time as like this movie came out like i'm, I'm pretty sure i i'm pretty sure the manga i don't know i think the manga came out just a little bit before but but super saiyan wasn't a thing this was the this this came out first with the glowing guy. The yeah, Bruce, glowing guy. Bruce Leroy kind of does go Super Saiyan at the end, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. So, like, you know, they I think I think that if they remade this and they, you know, like I said, deepen the mythology, add some stuff, you could do a three movie, um, a three movie kind of epic, and uh, and and who doesn't love kung fu fighting, right? I mean. I'm sure they could find. I mean, look, we're still waiting for Shang Chi, um, for the Are next we? one. Well, we were, and then, and then we weren't. But like, if, if they did this right, this would this would satisfy that. You know, that I'm in. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, so I, I get, yeah, I get what you're saying. Bring, combine anime with. Well, the an anime concepts like anime he, concepts, he, right, we, right? We we all know what uh, Shyamalan what Shyamalan did to uh, Dragon Ball. Umbala. Or no, no, it wasn't Dragon. No, it wasn't Dragon. Who was it? Uh, who, Avatar. Who? Avatar, Last Airbender. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, who, who who did Dragon Ball? I forget. No one I guess, good. I guess his name is uh, lost to time because he, you know, they 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 Alan they, Smith. They, Alan Smith. Yes, yeah, Alan Smith. But um, you know, Dragon Dragon Ball stuff is hard to do in in live action um so but they it could be done right these days they just i mean we saw it with chung chi they they they'd have to improve on that a little bit but i think if they did it right this this would be a really and it's somebody you could root for too you know because who doesn't love the country i mean it's it's all it's a little bit uh, shades of luke skywalker the country bumpkin who who comes out of nowhere and you know he's just got a lot of talent and he just needs the right teacher and all that. I think it could work. Hassan says, what's the goal of the MC for Main the character. remake? Main well, character. Okay. Well, what's the, what's the, the original goal of Goku? Wasn't, just a, to get stronger. Best martial, yeah, it's the same idea. The best martial artist the, 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 to, to number one. Like, it works in anime. Why doesn't it work here? Right. Yeah, and if you if you did show enough or whatever, what the, whoever the antagonist is for this, right? Then there's your goal to beat that guy. You what know? if you incorporated like a uh, Enter the Dragon Mortal Kombat style element to it, where there's like a tournament, right? Where you have to like, where both guys, where where, where Bruce Leroy and Shonoff have to like level up to fight each other, and then well, then then you then then you've got every anime person on the planet filling the seats because tournament arcs in anime, like, right, and... is one of the biggest tropes and one so of the I most win. successful <laughs> ones. Yes. So... What you're saying is I win. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. And with 12 billion anime fans, I mean, it'll be a success. <laughs> oh, stop! But you know, and by winning JD, by winning JD, that means you get all the money. I mean, like that that would that would literally drive people to sheet to to the seats. And you know, I think the American audiences, non anime audiences, would would flock to it as well because it because it's a really cool concept. It's yeah. worked in it worked end of the dragon. End of the dragon is still probably like the best an, um, anime, the best martial arts film of all time. And it's the, the tournament yeah. concept is what makes it. And they lifted it from Mortal Kombat, like the greatest fighting game of all time. So I mean, like I think you could actually incorporate that. I, I don't think it spits in the face of the original, like Last Dragon, because the last the Last Dragon was very tongue in cheek. I think you could still keep that little yeah. tongue in cheekness going with some, you know, taking it a little bit more, like giving a little bit more of a story arc to it. Because I actually had a good idea for my story too, if you don't mind pulling that up, Dave. I just want to acknowledge Kassan's comment because it's actually a really good idea. Hmm. 
goes, what do you think about making Duncan a reluctant hero that doesn't want the quickening, but he only sees no way to stop the immortals and, and they're less savory. Yeah, I agree with that. I think if you had like Duncan, like, like say when his wife died, he immigrant, he immigrates to America and he's kind of in, you know, just a, a hermit or something like that operating in secret, like a secret Highlander. And like this Ramirez character comes out and finds him and brings him out of retirement because he knows he has to level him up to get his power. I actually love that. Kassan. I'm going to steal that from my movie. That's never going to get made. It's and you mean brilliant. you mean Connor Duncan was Duncan McCarr was from the series. I always get them confused. I always get them confused. Connor, you're right. Connor was from the mm. movies. Oh no, in my version yes. of Duncan, I like that name better. Mm. Connor McLeod, the clown McLeod. Um, yeah, and All right. son, yeah, Goku had other for, other goals and everything. I get it, but um, you know, like seriously, you don't want to make it too complicated. Um, you just. Y- no, you could, you could I, put I, other goals in there, you know, just, like whatever agree, the antagonist does to him and that drives should the plot. Be, that kind of movie should just be a pure, like, martial arts, two guys leveling up and fighting each other movie, and it'll be a hit. But here's yeah. the thing, too, is I think we're putting, like, when you, when you say what's the goal, like, Western fiction is different than Eastern fiction in a lot of ways. Because Eastern fiction doesn't necessarily operate on the hero's journey template. Right. Right. Like a lot of times, like John says, like like a lot of anime, a lot of especially the martial arts enemies, the goal is just to, to get stronger and beat the shit out of the next guy coming up. Right. Yeah. And there's something there's something that a lot of Western writers struggle with is like we kind of try to put what we what we relate to is like the Western story template, the three arc structure onto you know, we kind of graft them onto these like Eastern concepts and they don't always work. I think this is why a lot of these adaptations fall short because like you watch you can watch a thousand i've the only get the only anime i've ever watched is dragon ball z and there's not like a big overarching story to that stuff you know goku is just spending weeks upon weeks getting stronger so we could beat the fuck out of the next guy and then he like sometimes like the vegeta then they become friends and then you know then they beat ass together you know that's yeah. kind of it's just different it's a different method of storytelling and it, it's simpler right. like we again like you're yeah. saying the west the western writers we're like oh well there has to be this we 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 need to have we always have to have a uh, love interest. We always have to do this. We have to do that. Like you you you're 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 throwing too much in there. You know you're you're doing Spider Man three. It's just you know. no. I don't know if it's too much, but it's just it's just what we know as a story. Whereas like this isn't that, nor should it be. And and we could I, Western audiences could understand just wanting to fight the 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 big bad right like well, that's, I, I agree yeah. that's why that's why kung fu films have always worked in this country like what was bruce lee's goal in enter the dragon win the fucking tournament beat the shit out of that guy like yeah, yeah. He was looking uh, for. rocky you know rocky's different rocky's a rocky is very much a character journey rocky is is not about winning rocky's about the fight rocky's about dream about the impossible dream like mm-hmm. st- all rocky wants to do is stand in the ring with the world heavyweight champion and it's really yeah. about him proving something to himself. It's different. Like Bruce Lee wants to beat the fuck out of that dude. Well, like, he also he also wants to figure out how to get the glow, right? Like that yeah, was that's his... and you could oh yeah for for yeah for for this yeah you could totally do that. Kassan mm-hmm. says the latest anime I've watched, Demon Slayer, my hero academia follows getting stronger template, but their tagging this are well thought out and intriguing. I'm not arguing you. I'm just saying this is what mm-hmm. Dragon. We were using Dragon Ball as our example. Yeah, but we, we yeah, yeah, and we need a little bit more a little bit more depth to the characters too. But yeah, you know. Sure. But it could it could really work. I like it, John. Yeah, I, I I find it fascinating that both of you had similar ideas, like the yeah, hero I leveling up, and then the villain leveling up, and then fighting at the end. Um, but there are similarity. There are similarities to the uh, to the properties we chose inherently. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like Where, the magic, okay. magic guys that fight their magic rival. Like we both picked remarkably similar stories. Right. Um, so my pick is the Lone Ranger, right? So they did a movie in 2011, I believe. Uh, like... 20, 2012, 2011, somewhere around there. Army, Army Hammer, Hammer and Johnny and Johnny Depp. See, I um, like that movie. But here's the problem. That that movie, okay, here's what you with the movie. It fails on a few different levels. Number one, and I'm not even going to get into the Johnny Depp isn't actually Native American. Uh argument i mean he's partially but not like they could have easily gotten a full-blown native american um they made yeah. it a johnny depp feel that was the first problem um johnny depp is he's the first character he's he's talking to the kid telling the story of the lone ranger 
And then he's also pure comic relief through that entire movie. Like he's it's played. Jo- as- it's Johnny Depp doing his Captain Jack Sparrow routine. Yes, as, as um, an Indian. Yes, it but the, and the problem. But the problem is, is they cast Army Hammer to play the Lone Ranger. Like you could have cast a ham sandwich and gotten more charisma out of it. <laughs> and then the other problem, right? Not not just casting, but the other problem too is like they did a trope of uh, he's not he's not like a, a hero type. He's not an army guy or whatever. He's a lawyer and he's avenging his brother's death. Like that's that's the story of of and that protecting movie. And his it, his brother's wife, who he you know anyway. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Like he had, so he had a they, lot of, a lot of, you know, give you a to... fish out of water story by making him a lawyer. Just, a problem. And then they they throw in comic relief from the beginning with Johnny Depp, and it's just like, I think yeah, it's... It, he wasn't right. a Texas Ranger. <laughs> like that was right. Like, so he's supposed right. to be a, a lone Ranger. Yeah. yeah. So here's. So here is my my concept for the movie. You start off with John Reed, the Lone Ranger, as a kid, growing up on like a ranch or a small village that shares land with um, Native Americans, right? In the you know in the eighteen hundreds or whenever, I think it's eighteen thirties is when Lone Ranger is supposed to take uh, place. And then um, so and then you show him having a relationship. With the other kids who are who happen to be of American, so you show that he grows up that way, right? And then there's something that happens in the town nearby, and who comes in and saves the day? The Texas Rangers. So you build this like he he sees them come in and save his town. He um, admires the Texas Rangers. That's his goal. So then, as he as an adult, as a young man, he joins the Texas Rangers. We can do a we can do a quick. Um, clip of him like learning how to be a texas montage. ranger montage thank you um do a montage of him learning to be a texas ranger and we give him a mentor who is like the guy teaching him like um the the you know dignity and um uh love of country love of god there's a whole lone ranger uh mantra that from the tv series that they didn't use in the movie by the way um, and then it, and his like, parents are murdered after they come out of watching Zorro on, uh, as a movie, right? You're confusing Zorro. fan. So then, what we then then flash forward to you know now he's a he's a full blown Texas Ranger, right? Is like he's the Lone Ranger. So I think and and like maybe we even show while he's training like he's a good shot and all these kinds of things, and then he goes out and he finds out that there's a group of Rangers uh, that he has to, that they haven't heard from a while. They send him out to investigate what's going on. And here you find out like they're terrorizing this uh, tribe of native Americans and uh, John Reed comes in and stops them. Right. And, and, and like, you know, makes them saves the day basically makes them, stop terrorizing these Indians, um, sorry, Native Americans, and they go away, right? But then later on, they come back and they beat him to to death, leave him to die, and that's when Tonto comes in. He comes in and, and uh, saves him. So he hmm. decides to take on the uh, mantle of the Lone Ranger, puts on a mask, and to stop this rogue bad band of rangers. They say when a when a tragedy happens so bad that his soul cannot pass into the world, a crow will carry his spirit back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's one that they're remaking and they're not going to save it. Oh no, it's going to. I had a friend that saw the preview of that and said it's ass cheeks. So, yeah, it is. So, so that's kind of like my idea. Like he's presumed yeah. dead, then he goes. He's now the Lone Ranger, and he stops injustices, especially you know uh, in in Texas. Well. I'm not, not so alone because, you know, Tonto. But... <laughs> and I do think, well, and that's the whole thing. I think you have a client, like, he saves this this, this village. Uh, Tonto helps him, but he goes, he says he can't get involved with the the trials of white men. And I think you can have a great scene, like, later on, something's going on, and Tonto comes in and saves the day. And that's 
what builds their friendship, right? And then at yeah. the end, what stops this rogue band of rangers, um, his mentor is the one he turns him into, and he's like, oh, you know, great job, we're really confused on the team, and that's when he says, and I believe it's um, the, 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 the mantra is something like, um, to be a good friend, you have to be a good on your own, or something like that. And there's like a whole thing about love of God, love of of country. So like he, he could say the the mantra, and then that's you know roll credits kind of thing. But he's sure. like, no, I'm I don't want to be part of this because the idea is being in a group, people could become corrupt. It's too easy to go. Hey, if we go do this, like, and that could be the theme of the movie that a uh, corruption of a large group. So so the, the the so in your story, the Rangers have to be the bad guys. Like you have yes. to corrupt. The, you have the correct the Texas Rangers have to be corrupted. Okay. Well, they, a lot of people were corrupt back then. <laughs> they were. I mean, a good chunk of the West was corrupt. A lot so, of people yeah. are corrupt in, in groups like that today. Very true. Uh, I think it works. I think it could work. Yeah. Uh, Kassan says the opportunity of Native American territory butting heads against the Texas expansion creates tons of criminal elements from both people. The Lone Ranger mm -hmm. and Tantum are only just heroes. Are the only just heroes. Yep. <laughs> I read just wrong. Uh, they work to read out the corruption elements from both factions. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm down. I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, ha Have a team up, team up with Zorro. <laughs> I was Get thinking about Zorro. Zorro's a cool character, but Zorro's old California, so a lot of, lot of travel. Right, and it's funny because, like, John and, and I talked about this yesterday, actually, a little bit, and, like, essentially what they did in the Lone Ranger is what they did in the Green Hornet movie, right? Well, the it's funny. You I know they're related. They're, they are related in 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 in, in uh, canon, but like that's the whole thing. Is like Seth Rogen was this bumbling uh, socialite who decides to put on a mask, but he's like he's an idiot. He can't do anything. It's actually Cato that does everything. And it kind of that in the, the Army Hammer Johnny Depp movie too. Like, but Tonto's kind of an idiot as well. <laughs> yeah, that movie really didn't work. No, There's it's no. flawed in a lot of ways. Um, <clears throat> the yeah. ending was okay. I, I mean, I, I I've watched it a few times. It was a good popcorn. But flick. again, I never really. And, and it's also it's one of those really movies that is built it. around some of those action sets, action scenes, right? Like, yeah. There's oh, not definitely. a lot of story that gets you there. The movie should be called Tonto because it's really his story, and it's not really about the Lone Ranger. And the problem is they cast it on Army Hammer as Lone Ranger, and he sucks. So. You got a guy with no charisma playing that. It just, yeah, like Seth Rogen's Green Hornet made fun of the idea of superheroes, right? Like it yeah. wasn't interesting being a real superhero movie. Whereas like the Green Hornet character, like yeah, Kato did the cool shit, but I mean they were a team. Yeah, you know, like like Green Hornet and Kato were a, a team. Yeah, you know, whereas that the, movie just I don't know. The the, the problem the problem it being was, that the the original show the Green Hornet they cast Bruce Lee yeah, Kato as was, as Kato. And like they cast know. the coolest motherfucker in the world to play Kato, <laughs> yeah. and like he overshadowed everybody in the show. And Van Johnson's like, "Yeah, Kato, go whoop his ass." So yeah. I get why you would do that. I get why you would why you would make. I get why you would do that, but it doesn't make for a good movie, right? Because you, right. your main hero can't be a complete and total dipshit, which is I think is the problem with both movies. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, because right. yeah. they never really did. They always fell into everything. They never like with, with the with the Lone Ranger. They had it like, oh, he's he's faded, and he would like shoot the gun and bounce, 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 boom, bad guys are dead. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, you were faded. And that was eh. the, he never that he never took action. Things, that was one of the things I was thinking too. Is that like as he stops these um, outlaw rangers, the ones that are corrupt. Um, he takes their bags and melts down, and that's how he make, gets his silver bullets. Because he's outside, he's dead, he's outside the wall, he can't just go get bullets. He has to make them himself, so he's melting down the silver bag. I, I, I actually like that. That's pretty cool, Dave. That's a cool idea. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's our... That, I think that's, that's, that, that's pretty good. I like all three of these ideas, and I want to know from those watching, then those watching after the fact, down in the comments below, what do you think? of our ideas and what's a movie that failed that you think should be remade um because it had good bones and uh yeah and we will probably talk about that on the next episode because you know, girls. We... <laughs> was you that know, a failure it... i think so i'm pretty mm. sure it was a failure okay i don't know what's it 
are, are we like is there any movie com- what, what, uh, coming attractions what is there any movie coming out or anything that we're we're in a lull we're in a lull till summer I actually had an idea for next week uh, since, we got- uh, where we talked about the Silver Surfer is maybe we could do a comic and we could do Earth X sure I've never Earth read it X. I don't, Alex I don't Ross either. it's essentially Alex Ross's kingdom come in the Marvel Universe oh yeah. that sounds interesting yeah, I never read Kingdom it. Kingdom Come was really good. Kingdom Come, but yeah, there's no Mark Wade though. So I mean, like, <clears throat> I don't know if it, it's not as good, but I've never read it. So like, let's give it a yeah. I'll yeah. Go. All right. Well, there you go. All right. We got an idea for next week. We got three good ideas there. I think that's a good place to to put this one in for a landing. Yeah. We so did one, Dave. <laughs> let's yeah. Let's go around the room and. Uh, do you either have any recommendations or what did you learn on the podcast this week? And John, you can go first. Uh, new, new anime coming out, new season. And, um, there's some really good ones. Um, there's two that I want to, that I want to plug. Uh, one is windbreaker. Uh, it's about a kid who, uh, finding his place and, uh, He's in a really bad place when he when he gets to a new school and um, he's a really good fighter. I, I normally don't go in for the no no um, supernatural, no uh, power ups, no nothing. Uh, but this this storyline is very compelling. And then the other one is uh, as a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skill to rise in the world. There you go, J.D. And uh <laughs> It, I, this, this one started really good. I, I was, um, it's about a, a guy whose only power is to appraise other people's, um, skills. And when you, when you said appraisal, I thought he was like appraising their property. No. Right, right. But that's an interesting, interesting like, idea. What? Yeah. Yeah, it is because he, like mo- most isekai or, um, or shonen, it's like your, your main character has the, the power. This kid doesn't have any real power except to tell who else has power. So it looks like it's going to be him surrounding himself um, with people that actually have real power. And it's set in a failing kingdom where he might have to take action as the next Lord. So it looks really good. Yeah. Great show. Tokyo Vice is awesome. Uh, That was why I read the book, Tokyo Vice when I was writing Gaijin, the, the, when I was actually putting together, yeah, when I was writing my buddy, Justin Nipper, who, uh, who works for pro wrestling, Noah, who lived in Japan for a little bit, um, recommended the book Tokyo Vice to me. So that became kind of like my Bible when I was putting no well, Gaijin together. And I saw the first two episodes that I really, really liked that I need to finish the show. I just love the, mm-hmm. I just love the book a lot. Sorry. All right. Mm-hmm. What about, uh, are you done, John? Yep. Okay. JD. Is that your recommendation? Saw... Or you... Well, yeah, read ah. Tokyo Vice. It's a great book. Uh, I actually was going to recommend Barbie. We saw Barbie this weekend, and it was pretty good. I, I like... still haven't seen it. It's weird. It's really, really weird. But, um, yeah, I was entertained. Where would you see it on? Uh, Max. Max, okay. Yeah, I've still got it. <laughs> we, at some point, we should talk about that. Um, the prices of all the streaming services yeah. have gone up. I, They're I motherfucker oh, yeah. bills today. And... <sighs> Tell me about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and we're canceling stuff left and right we got max for right now we got we got rid of paramount we got rid of peacock we just got max and yeah prime, i'm thank- i'm not getting rid of i'm not getting rid of prime because it's part of my wife addicted to prime we just there's stuff yeah that's in my house all the and time. i'm watching reacher right now so i'm not going to get rid of it so oh, that's, um, that's on that prime is- yeah that's on prime yeah maybe we should watch reacher for the show i kind of i kind of want to be twisted my arm into watching that now all right. Well, maybe we'll do that the following the week. following week coming out. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> All actually. right. Okay. I learned that you guys think a lot alike <laughs> when it comes that's to movies. We have a podcast. <laughs> and how to remake them. Um, yeah. And I recommend, I do recommend Preacher. I just started watching it. Like I said, I'm, I'm on episode four and I'm loving it. I like, I love the intrigue. I love um, all the acting is really good. And oh, I like the, the main detective of the town um, who's from Boston and then he moves down there. I can't think of the actor's name, but like, as I'm watching the show, I'm like, there's your Kang replacement. Like this guy is really good. Oh yeah. No, show. he would do, he would kill it. 
Yeah. I can't think of his name and I feel horrible um for not remembering. But uh but yeah, like he would be great. Um he was on the show uh I Zombie um when that was on the CW. But now that's an old show. Oh, that's right. I remember yeah. Um Oscar uh, Malcolm Goodwin. Yes, that's it. Malcolm Goodwin. Malcolm Goodwin. Excellent actor. Yes. Um definitely. And look who comes in at the very end. Frosty. <laughs> Thanks for joining hey, us with, Frosty. Three, with like 30 seconds left in the show. Um, all right. On that, also, I recommend that you go to here. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Before I say that, well, if you're watching this right now, you're watching this after the fact, please smash that like button because it helps with the algorithm. And then click that all subscribe love button. We all Mark, love smash. Hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss us when we go live. Um we really appreciate it, and uh, yes, again, and, and if you can, comment, because that always helps with the algorithm as well. Um, and uh, yes, on that note, make sure that you head over to superheroespeak.com, where you can find the podcast every week, links to all our social media at the top of the page, comic book reviews by our good friend Kristen, and so much more. I'm posting all the rants and interviews over there as well. Um, yeah, if you're paying attention to the channel, um, we interviewed raven monroe last week and we're interviewing um o'connor what's his first name your the, your friend um george george o'connor it will be next week talking about mars vampires on mars so that should be a fun interview um i'm stoked because george is actually coming to chicago this week and we're taking our boys to go watch new japan pro wrestling in chicago i'm jazzed and we're going to talk about it when he's on the show i'm super super fired up nice. all right that's well, there you go. Um, and on that note, boys and girls, as always, thanks for watching. Don't let your cape go out the door. Have a good week.